Hey, yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. Hezekiah Walker. Hello. How you feeling, my brother? Man, I feel, I feel, uh, I'm sad, bro. Why? Because my mayor, man. Oh, you voted for Mayor Adams? I don't live in New York. I work here. You voted for Mayor Adams? I don't think I voted for him, but I like him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really, I like him because he was doing a, actually, I don't really have any good reason why I like him, but I saw him do, a, uh, he was doing a speech once somewhere, I forget, and uh, and they were like questioning him and like questioning his experience. And he goes, well, you do it then. And then the Always whole, a good answer. And the whole audience just shut the up. And I was like, that is the best way to handle politics. Always a good answer. We cry about politicians all the time. None of us want to do this. Nobody want to do the job. It's not, you don't pay you no money. It's all the scrutiny in the world. You get hated by half the people yeah. and you make 100 grand a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like here, he probably had to take a pay cut from when he was a policeman. At least he could I, take bribes. I think I read today that he was making 258 or some shit like that a year. But imagine making that much money versus having the second most powerful job. Job in the country. Mayor of New York is the second most powerful job in the country. You think more powerful than Cali? Yeah. Really? They got a gay guy running California now. No. Gavin Newsom? No disrespect to all the gay guys out there, you know what I'm saying? When you see a handsome man... It's a compliment man, to them. Exactly. When you see a handsome man, you're like, man, you could be out here knocking them all down. All of them. <laughs> man, you got it. Well, maybe... Yeah. It's, well, maybe, Captain Freak Or maybe we missing out. What you mean? Maybe he's knocking all the, <laughs> all the bussy down, and we missing out. We're missing out on Gavin, or we missing on out the on the bussy? bussy? Yeah, we are missing out on the bussy. I don't know. We, know. we just don't I like know. it. It's like, I don't like cilantro, <laughs> but I'm sure people that do enjoy it. I hate it. I think it's awful. But I'm sure the people that like it, like Mexicans, it's an acquired love it. taste. It, it is. <laughs> it is an acquired taste. I'm talking uh, about to, bussy, not cilantro. To be I'm fair. not going to acquire it. That's a fact. Uh -huh. He's been married twice. He was married oh, yeah, to. Oh, you married to your man's girl. Why is it my man's? <laughs> Why is it my man's? Because <laughs> he be leaving comments on your post. Yeah, but he was he my man. Was, when, oh, he, Donald Trump Jr., right? Jr. Why is he yes, my he's man's, there. bro? When he was winning, he was my man's, but now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Schultz, flip flops over here. Schultz, what's up, Kamala? Kamala, you out here killing it, Kamala. Donald Trump Jr., he was married. He's married to, no. Kimberly Gilfoyle. That was his second wife, right? Yeah. yeah he Gavin. stole Gavin's beard. Yeah, come on, You're man. You're telling me Gavin's not gay? No, come he's on, not. bro. Why do you think that? Look at him. His mouth. I never looked. Come on, bro. Nah, I never looked. I just know he's like, he's, he, he fits the California uh, aesthetic. Tall. Second we started talking handsome. about gay shit, you just need something in your hand, bro. Gotta grab you it. Just, you just need oh, something. Gotta grab it. Everybody. <laughs> Now I'm not playing gay no more, y'all. You don't want to make him horny. <laughs> <laughs> You're not playing. Yo, the incredible bulk would be fun. <laughs> the incredible bulk. Like this big, yeah, this big, big gay, gay green guy. This <laughs> big gay green guy. Oh, you don't want to make, 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 make him horny. You don't want like him when he's horny. You don't want to like him very much. <laughs> <laughs> that would be insane, man. This dude just gets a big green bulk in his pants. Every single time. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make him horny. Salute to Gavin Newsom, though, man. Nah, I don't know if he's gay, man. I'm just talking shit. That's all. It's a podcast. That's what we do, okay? Um, Mayor Adams. What happened with Mayor Adams, man? Pull it up, Chris. I, I, I just pull up a headline. All right, somebody Yo, pull free up Free Mayor headline. Adams, bro. Free Mayor he's Adams. He's not even arrested. I don't, I don't think he turns himself in until next week. Oh. Yeah, he don't even turn himself in until next all week. Right. Well, stay free, Mayor Adams. We fuck with you. It's interesting, right? Because I'm starting to see something about public servants. Ooh. I think that we have to start paying public servants top dollar. Uh, uh, wait a minute. I love that you said this, by the way. We have to. It's the same thing with teachers. It's the same thing with... Whoa, whoa. Let's no, not go too far. No, just public servants. Any public let's servant. Let's not go no, too No, teachers far. too, man. We have to pay these people top dollar because, as we just said, they're already doing jobs nobody else wants to do. Right. They're making little to no money, right. right? Taking all the shit in the world. Yep. It's too easy to entice them to do the wrong thing if you're not paying them correctly. Now, I'm not making so, no excuses no, for them. No, 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 no. You make a great point where it's like, I think the specific thing, it's tough obviously with teachers. Like, yeah, yeah, I think if you have like a heart, you want teachers to get paid more. Yeah. You appreciate the fact that like they are responsible for our children nine hours a fucking day. Come on, man. And you want to nickel and dime them. That's a little ridiculous. And they that, get mad when they get OnlyFans. Right? You know or, when, or when they suck one of the kids' dick. They, you probably don't not even give them enough uh, money for food. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, a girl got to eat. You know what I'm saying? Or a guy. Or a guy. God damn. God, we got some munchai over there. We got some munches. <laughs> we got some munches over there. What I'm trying to say is this is really our fault. Oh. This is our fault for not compensating these teachers more. Fucking terrifying. And Eric Adams. And Eric Adams. No, but the caveat that I would make is you cannot give people positions of immense power and not compensate them financially along with it. Because what will happen is that they will be susceptible to bribes. Absolutely. I think in Singapore, the president or whatever the fuck they got out there, I think makes like three mil a year. Three and mil? I, I think that they pay their... their so their, that's my question. What's a bribe-proof number for the mayor of New York City? Exactly. So it's like, there's no such thing as a bribe-proof number. You have to have some with integrity. But if you got a job where you're making millions a year or you're making something like that... It, you're less susceptible to ten grand from the Turkish embassy or whatever the fuck right. it is. hundred thousand. They said that exactly. Mayor, Can mayor you, Adams is uh, charged with bribery and fraud. They said he, come he, on, he, yo. he's being a Damian Williams, the U.S. attorney in Manhattan, said Adams took over hundred grand in graft and used his powers to help Turkey. So, so here's the thing: that Turkish shit is probably bullshit. Like, and there's a lot of different angles to this. Like, my understanding from what I heard from people is that. There was a few Biden what are called surrogates, which means these are people in powerful positions of government that supported uh, Joe Biden, right? Yeah. And Mayor Adams was one of them. And then during the whole migrant crisis in New York, he spoke out against Biden. And then ever since that, all of a sudden, there's an investigation. There's this turkey thing. Like, But he wasn't the only person. Like, it was plenty of people who've turned around and started saying, like, okay, this republic, this migrant shit is too much. You know that, what I'm saying? Yeah, but they might not have been the surrogates for Biden. Yeah. So it was a big slap in the face. Now, here's the thing that's interesting, though. Because I was talking to some people that I know I don't want to, like, say who is, but they, they were telling me kind of, like, how government works a little bit. Like, every mayor of every town, okay, city, whatever, gets money. The way you pay them is not directly. Yeah. What you'll do is, like, the mayor will host a dinner, and you'll buy a table at the dinner for $10,000. And you know if you want to get your building code pushed through or rezoning, you have to buy three tables at the mayor's dinner, his charity softball dinner. That's, that's lobbying. That's every, everybody does but that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The, in this situation, what I find peculiar is that it's so egregious. Like, there are systems set up for the politicians to get rich. Look at every politician that entered office. They come out twice as rich. Clearly, they're making money. Don't just take an envelope across the table. There has to be something more to this. That's why I think, like, see, here's the thing. I, I, I don't disagree with you. He, he's indicted on five federal public corruption charges, including bribery and wire fraud. Here's the thing about when you go against the grain. Now, let's just say hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, Eric Adams is right. He was a surrogate. Uh, he, he, he went against the grain, questioned the Biden administration. They got upset. They got their get back. You can't get them back if there's nothing to get back. You understand what I'm saying? If you're clean, if they don't have nothing on you, because these, these things yeah, yeah. are nothing until they want them to be something. The question is, I don't think you could get to that level of power with, without something on you. Like, I don't think they let you get there. Damn. You know what I mean? Like they got something on Kamala, they got something on Biden, they got something, they got something on everybody, and that's why you're allowed by the administration to reach that level because they know at any point in time shit hits the fan. Yeah. So once again, I've said this before, and I'll say it a million times: President Barack Obama must have been the cleanest human being walking the face of the earth. Or, because even your ops know, even your ops know your bullshit. I mean, Tucker brought that guy on that said that, that Obama was getting a little Gavin Newsom hey, back in the day. Man, I'm supposed to be the gay one here. <laughs> yeah, why, yeah. Why I'm, just, why I'm just saying. <laughs> Tucker brought on the, the guy who said he gave him the Gavin Newsom. <laughs> the Gavin is crazy. Yo, he gave him Yo, some give Gavin. somebody the Gavin? That's, is that crazy. is a little wild Gavin, thing. Gavin, I don't know why show just trying to make you gay this part. Yo, but, you're not, Gavin's not gay. He's just handsome. It's my insecurity. He is. He is. He's a good guy. It's my man. insecurity, Gavin. I, I apologize. I'm looking at the indictment. It was Unsealed on Thursday, prosecutors said the scheme began when he was a top elected official in Brooklyn, continued when he was mayor. The investigation focused on whether Eric Adams conspired with the Turkish government to receive illegal foreign campaign contributions in exchange for acting on their behalf. And the acting on their behalf was like 
allowing them to build something for their embassy or some shit. Yeah, yeah it says uh, like the, get the fuck out of yeah. here. Like that may, that makes you not qualified to be mayor because you let the Turkish people build an embassy somewhere. Yeah, like so, every single real estate developer in the city hasn't bribed the mayor in some way, shape, or form. Oh, absolutely. Fuck out of here, so bro. The this benefits is goofy. included luxury travel, free and discounted Turkish airline tickets, and free meals in hotel rooms from wealthy foreigners, and at least one Turkish government. Can I official. say something, Charlemagne? Of course. Why I don't believe this? Because he's still bald. If, <laughs> if Mayor Adams all of a sudden came out with a Scotty he Pippen would buy from there. I'd be like, that motherfucker's corrupt. That <laughs> motherfucker's going to Turkey, and he's taking everything that they got. But the fact that he's still bald lets me know that that man is pure. It said, Mr. Adams pressured officials at the New York Fire Department to permit a new Turkish consulate building in Manhattan despite safety problems. A fire department official overseeing the safety assessment said he was told he would lose his job if he did not follow the order. Jesus Christ, man. Man, come on, bro. Also, all this bureaucracy around building is bullshit, too. Like, every one of these dudes is getting bribed. All these people that are signing off on your plumbing or your electric, half of them don't even have legit papers to even do the work. The whole thing is, is, is a giant honeypot of corruption. This, there's got to be something deeper than just this $100,000 for the Turkish embassy. This, this is crazy, too, in the indictment. Eric Adams, the defendant... Continued to conceal the benefits he received from foreign nationals seeking to gain influence over him. Adams did not report any of the 2019 gifts he received from the airline manager or the promoter on his annual disclosure form. In addition, in March 2019, while exchanging text messages to plan another possible trip to Turkey in which the airline manager would arrange travel for Adams, the Adams staff had texted Adams to be on the safe side. Please delete all messages you send me. That's a little crazy. <laughs> Adams responded, always do. <laughs> on June 22nd, 2018, the same day as the fundraising event just described, the Adams staffer and the promoter discussed by text message a possible trip by Adams to Turkey. The promoter stated, in part, fundraising in Turkey is not legal, but I think I can raise money for your campaign off the record. The Adams staff, staffer inquired, how will Adams declare that money here? The promoter responded, he won't declare it R. We'll make the donation through an American citizen in the U.S., a Turk. I'll give cash to him in Turkey, or I'll send it to an American. He will make a donation for you. The Adam Stafford replied, I think he wouldn't get involved in such games. They might cause a big stink later on, but I'll ask anyways. The Adam Stafford then asked, how much do you think would come from you? Question mark. The promoter responded, max 100 grand. The Adam Stafford wrote 100 grand. Do you have a chance to transfer that here? We can't do it while Eric is in Turkey. To which the promoter replied, let's think. After this conversation, the Adam Stafford asked Adams whether the Adam Stafford should pursue the unlawful foreign contributions offered by the promoter. And contrary to the Adam Stafford's expectations, Adams directed that the Adam Stafford pursue the promoter's illegal scheme. Hold one more part, because this is funny as shit. The Adams staff also agreed to speak with FBI agents and falsely denied the criminal conduct of herself and Adams, among others. At one point during her voluntary interview, the Adams staffer excused herself to a bathroom and while there, deleted the encrypted messaging application she had used to communicate with Adams, the promoter, the Turkish official, the airline manager, and others. She deleted WhatsApp during her interview. I mean, that's... that's... <laughs> I mean, She's a real one. Hey, come out with your hands up, guys. She's a real one. She's a real one. Hey, come out they with you. your hands they got up. You. They got you. They got you. Yo, and here's the thing. Think about this. This happens to every mayor, right? Oh, every man. mayor. And I wonder if they're basically just using this now. They're like, what if he eventually becomes a senator? What if he eventually becomes, um, he has like a cabinet position? Right? Then the Turkish government goes, hey, by the way, we don't want to make it public that we bribed you when you were mayor. So do us a favor and give us this, you know. No, they yeah. said that. They said they specifically targeted him because they thought he had a trajectory. Trajectory up. So yeah. it's not even about the embassy now. It's not even about this money now. It's the mayor of New York is the most powerful, second most powerful position in government. And you are going to go somewhere with huge influence right after that. And they want to know they got their hooks in. So you he well, can't well, I be so point out that shows is such a tried and true New Yorker. Yeah. That he keeps saying the mayor of New York City is the second most powerful person in government. All of government. I would say it's the first. <laughs> I would say it's the first. Forget the vice president. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Speaker yeah. of the house. Forget the speaker of the house. The mayor of New York City is the second most powerful person in the government. The things he says, he has the second most powerful mouth in government. Gavin Newsom would be the first. Nah, Secretary Pete. 
<laughs> yo, yo, the fact that we didn't say one woman, we need to be congratulated. There's no sexism on this podcast. This is only the celebration of homosexuals. This is the Brilliant Idiots podcast. Gavin Newsom is straight. I'm standing here once, I'll say it again. He's a straight man this that loves vaginas. So crazy. Mayor Adams, man, this is such. Shout out Pete, though. Salute to Secretary Pete. God Listen, damn. This is crazy. I don't know, man. I just yeah. know that uh, I would love to see public servants, elected officials making more money so they aren't subject to situations like this. And listen, everything, Mayor Adams came on Breakfast Club. Mayor Adams said, hey, um, there's, a, there's, a, there, there, there's an attack happening on black mayors all across the country. The real focus should be on our national government that's saying, why are you doing this in New York? Why you, check out what they're doing. They're doing it to New York. They're doing it to Chicago. They're doing it to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. They're doing it to Houston. What is the same in all those cities? All black mayors. Mm. All black mayors. And so what we're saying, same thing that I'm going through here, my brother Johnson is going through. My sister Bass is going through. My brother Turner is going through. So our folks, are, what they wanted to happen, Governor Abbott wanted to happen, we're gonna turn these of, of cities against their mayors. We're gonna create this environment where they're all gonna go against mm. their mayors. Go Google what they're doing to my brother in Chicago. Go Google what they're doing to Sister Bass. So the cities have now turned against these black mayors that are making real change for the first time. I got my, my guy Marty Smalls. He he got indicted like a week ago as well. What happened? Him and his wife. Hey, it was something silly. It's something. It's so silly. Like murder. No, it was like he disciplined his daughter or something. I don't. I, it's something silly. I'll look up the case in a second. You're but, talking about Atlantic City. In Atlantic City. Yeah, 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 yeah. You saw that? Yeah. What was it for? What was the case again? They, it, child abuse, I think, essentially. But he but like, spanked like, his daughter. It's or like something? a teenage daughter. I didn't. Yeah. yeah. It's something strange, it's silly like that. But an indictment? So, here's the thing. <laughs> now, you get indicted because you're Mayor Eric Adams, right? You get indicted and you say, hey, it's because I was against the Biden administration. Now, you say it's an attack on black mayors. Mm. All of that may be true, but you gotta be clean. You can't have anything like this. Nah. You know what I mean? You can't have anything they can use against you. I hate when people say things like, well, he got set up. Yeah, but if he didn't, if he wasn't into what he was into, then he wouldn't got set he up. He got set up. It would so, have also helped if he'd been doing a good job. I mean, he's been doing a terrible job. Has he? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, how do you judge the job of the mayor? I think we're comparing it to like Bloomberg, where he would just spend his own money all the time, and then we got spoiled. R R R Giuliani. Even though you know Giuliani had you know terrible uh, uh, policies in regards to the policing, mm. especially for black and brown people, but it definitely cleaned the city up. What are right. you trying to say? What? 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 what, 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 what <laughs> we had terrible policies <laughs> when it came to black and brown people. But you're saying it worked? Are you saying it? Did, I mean, it definitely cleaned the city up. Interesting. hundred percent. It cleaned the city up. It just wasn't fair. It wasn't fair practices. Like they, Chris had a good idea one time, even though it's illegal. Stop and frisk all of us. No, yes. a certain amount of white people every week. You got to stop and frisk ten thousand white people, no matter what. Just that's to illegal. Even, just to even it out. You can't do that. Why not just evenly stop and frisk? Because then they had a chance to do that and they didn't do it. Now you got to force them to stop and frisk white people. Oh, you want to do only white, like a no? I want to do everybody, but there's a mandated number of white people. I got to go outside. Thinking, Don't give me that mandate. Just evenly stop and frisk. Then why didn't they do that the first time? Because the cops are, uh, you know, racially biased. <laughs> the cops are trying to, <laughs> right. you They're know. Racially biased. I'm saying I'm cool with that. If that gets guns off the street, <laughs> if I if I walk outside knowing. I'm going to get stopped and frisked once a week. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I don't know, You're man. You're okay getting stopped and frisked once a week? If it means that guns would disappear from the streets of New York City. Yes. You know who that used to happen to? Hmm. Who? Chris Rock. Chris Rock would leave his neighborhood in Alpine, New Jersey, and would get stopped no less than once or twice a week. He would document it all the time. It happened right. for a long time. This was like Instagram and Twitter. I don't know if it was Instagram or Twitter. Hmm. It was one of the social media apps. He would literally get stopped and pulled over. In his leaving his neighborhood of Alpine, New Jersey, once or twice a week, and that's, he, that's he documented this for a while. It, it it happens, man. People take advantage of their power, but you know, I just want. I I don't even know if honestly giving an elected official more money would stop them from doing corrupt things. No, it just might, and it also might 
mean that you're going to get the people that are doing the job just for the money and not doing the job because they want to be a public servant. Yeah. It's hard, man. This politics shit is hard, bro. It, but Chris does bring up a good point. If you're beloved, people turn, turn, turn a blind eye. Right? If you're beloved, people come to your defense and it's like, oh, this is some bullshit. And the other thing I was saying, this is what I was trying to say. I was stalling because I lost my train of thought, but I got it back just now. I do not like how Democrats are so quick to throw each other under the bus. They do this shit all the oh, fucking time. AOC whether it's Al Franken, whether it's fucking out. Governor Cuomo. It's just like, yo, the guy is still innocent until proven guilty. There's no need, AOC or anybody else, to tweet, you know, this guy needs to resign. This is why y'all lose a lot of the culture wars, because Republicans don't do that. Republicans, Republicans don't do that after they get found guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like you know what I mean? Yeah. After they get found guilty, they're like, nope, hold it the fuck down. <laughs> like, they, they, there should be nobody rushing to tell Mayor Adams to resign in this era because nobody's held to the same standard. So being that nobody's held to the same standard, how about everybody just be quiet mm. and let, let, let due process do what it does, mm. you know? Unless, of course, you know, if he gets ousted, one of your guys gets in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like if you if you know you calling for Eric Adams to resign, well, enable maybe you to run if you want to in a special election. Or, now it's advantageous. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, that's that's all I'm saying. You that's think what that's what's going on here? There's a little foul play. Um, I read today that if he gets out there, Juman Williams yeah, he will become the mayor. He becomes, but only for. 90 so, days or something? Yeah, something. Why is he lieutenant mayor or whatever it is? Uh, is the, uh, what's the I forgot public his advocate, I think is the yeah. term, but it's it's the position that gets elevated. Yeah. And so he'll only be here for 90 days and it'll be some type of special election. Yeah. Well, I like Brad Landers. I don't know if he'll make it, but uh, the name that I saw last night is Cuomo. It's going to pivot and run for mayor potentially. Which Cuomo? The former governor. Mario. Yes. Well. Is that Mario? No, Mario's the father. Andrew. Yes. Andrew is going to run. Wow. Andrew was a good governor, yo. Cut it out. Until he wasn't. It, 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 but he wasn't he doing some corrupt shit, too? Well, he gets a lot of criticism for how he handled COVID. Also with the I ladies. they loved him for COVID. No, 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 no. He was it, putting old people into yeah. the old people homes. Oh, yeah, they were yeah, all yeah, dying yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, also yeah. there was a, the, the lady shit, right? Didn't he get some, like, sexual stuff? Yeah, yeah, he definitely was. Uh, but even then, I remember being on Bill Maher. And I remember having a conversation on Bill Maher. And I remember saying, he was, what is the yeah. difference between Governor Cuomo and President Biden? Because it's not like President Biden didn't have allegations. That's a good point. So why? But, but, but if you go back and remember 2020, everybody acts like they forgot this. When President Biden had those allegations, there was so many old people saying he should step down. Mm. Everybody was saying he should step down. You know, he, 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 yeah, they believed the women, all of this type of stuff. So it's just like, it's all politics. That's what I'm saying. It's no consistent standard to any of it. So being that there's no consistent standard to any of it, why call for the mayor to resign? Yeah, it's a little bit. I just relax for a minute. It is very. Am I peculiar. tripping, Chris? You're not tripping. It's innocent to proven guilty. You either He's believe just it or you don't. He's doing a terrible job, in my opinion. So I don't. But that's have a not a reason why he should be convicted of corruption. Like you could make, he has a term, right? You voted him. I don't know sure. if you voted for him, but sure. he's allowed to serve that term. Right now, it seems like people are supporting ousting him simply because he's not doing a good job. But that's just well, not how the a system lot of this works. Is also the allies and friends you make, and I think he also did a poor job of. Oh yeah, he's not. Uh, he's, oh, he's not no. beloved at, in no way. I think he form. took care of his inner circle, which was his mistake. He promoted a lot of people that he's been connected to over the years. Yeah, they all turned out to be corrupt. It seems from these indictments, but I don't think he built alliances. But that's that's in the wider the, political world. That's the thing. That's what you got to realize. Right. It's like you have to politic this shit, like right. literally. Politics is building those yeah, relationships. That's all it is is relationships. Salute to uh, Ole Yimmy O'Lauren. Uh, Who's you know, that? She, we, we had her on. She's a, she's a public defender, but <coughs> we had her on with Mayor Adams earlier this year. And, I mean, she pressed him on all of this stuff. Mm. Like, she's always been a very vocal, you know, opponent of, of, of Mayor Adams. Never been a fan of him. You know, but she he's... To me, she's one of the... Uh, people that if you are an elected official, those are the people you should talk to. Mm. You should talk to the constituents that give you pushback. You should mm. talk to your constituents that, you know, don't agree with you mm. because that one constituent represents so many people. They see you having a conversation with that person. And they get it. And, 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 and uh, Ole Yemi was representing, like, I mean, it was, a, it was a, a, a big conversation, you know, and it was a big interview. And, and, you know, people were watching that interview and they saw themselves in her because she was speaking for them. Mm. But she brought up all of this stuff 
She bought up the, the, the feds taking his phone and mm. the corrupt, like she bought it all up. Law enforcement does something every day. It's bad. But when they do something against Eric Adams, oh, it's good. <laughs> you know, come no, on, let's I didn't make say up our I said what happened. <laughs> okay. I didn't say that it was good. I, I don't think it's I good that our back, mayor is being investigated came, for illegal campaigns. I, came, I don't think that's good. I came back because of not that they had to take my phones. Mm. That is that is not true. And you should. I, I said it happened I, I, that I day. Don't know. No, it, was, it did not yes, happen that day. I said it was reported before you were going that reported, you were on your way. Yes, wrong, it was, Mayor Adams. No, it was reported wrong. Where you know, you know, your phone? Did the FBI seize your phone? She, 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 did yes. they search your top eight? Not that day. Did they search the home of several, several yes. people? Okay. Yes. That's what I said. Okay. And I didn't say that was a good thing. I don't think it's good that our mayor is being investigated. And, you know, I saw a lot of those clips getting reposted last night. So I saw a. Saw so, uh, a good interview. My girl was getting interviewed by Oprah and uh Who, the VP? Yeah. And uh Madam VP. And basically and there was a moment she like she almost had a knockout moment, like it was perfect, and then she kinda like fell back on it and I hate was it. a little you saw it, right? I know exactly what you're talking she about. She had she had the moment where I was like, Oh, the election's hers. Now a lot changes every single week, something changes, but play could play it. Do you I have was, it? It's one, two, it's gun on her two. I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh hope, my god. I would that hope that's shit. it. If somebody and I thought breaks in my house, they're getting shot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I, I, I hear that. I hear that. Probably should not have said that. <laughs> that's the only thing that's frustrating, right? She had a real moment as her. Mm -hmm. She says a hilarious, funny thing that. I think there's bipartisan support for. You break into my house, yes. you get shot. What person wouldn't agree with that? That's the whole point of owning guns. I, I want to have like a longer conversation just about like kind of what's happening culturally. But like there's a perfect example of Democrats pulling to the center. Democrats were kind of caught up in the rainbow ship for a little bit and they went too crazy and it was like super far left. Because of the phones, because of social media. Sure. They thought that represented everybody. They thought that represented America. And they were so off. And and But now you see like a line like that, you see, even see her approach and it's coming back to this like very almost like centrist ideology, old school Democrats. The Republicans are so seduced by conspiracy theory. And, and I Take this from someone who loves conspiracy theories. The whole party is wrapped up in conspiracy theories. Like everything. Of this. Yes, but what I'm saying is the, the Republican Party is so far right to the point where Trump is even during the debate going, they're eating cats and dogs. Like, <laughs> like that, like it's a knee-jerk reaction. The whole thing is conspiracy. Every institution is corrupt. They might be. We don't believe any history. Don't believe any pharmaceutical drug. Don't believe, don't believe nothing. Everything is out to destroy you. It's so far right that now I think people are starting to go. They're like getting exhausted. There's like a fatigue. We want here. We've said this all the time. So we don't the, want this. So we it's don't not want that. We want it right here in the center, baby. So it's not the party that has the younger candidate. It's the party that doesn't go too far to the extreme. And it looks as if the Democrats have pulled to the middle and the Republicans are still reaching way to the right. President Obama was a J.D. Centrist. Vance, way to the right. Bill Even Clinton. Tucker is a mouthpiece, way to Biden's the right. Biden's a Republican. Rep Bill Clinton was a centrist. Uh, uh, but for President a while- Obama was a centrist. Biden was a centrist. Yeah, but for right? a while, the party the was VP a bunch of unicorns, and now I feel like, for whatever reason, it's pulled back a little bit. Listen, we got to go back, right? There was a time when President Obama didn't agree with gay marriage. This is the truth to the matter. Like his first time, he didn't agree with it. Like he came yeah. around later on, right? And I think yeah. that I don't have a problem with gay marriage. I think that's like people should have the right to be miserable if they want to be miserable. You know what I'm saying? Like it's fine, right? I heard that, a fire response to that. What? So he's asking his protester, "Do you believe in gay marriage?" He goes, "I believe a gay man should be able to marry a gay woman." <laughs> <laughs> that shit hit. <laughs> you didn't see that coming, rainbows? Did you see that coming, rainbows? But to the, to this point, listen. I'm two way, right? My wife is two way. I was in New Orleans over the weekend, and uh, I was doing a fantastic conversation at a Baldwin and Company Books with a, a young lady named Sharice Gibson. Sharice Gibson works for the, the the news station down there in New Orleans, and she was talking to me about a chapter in my book called "The Language of Politics Is Dead," where I'm saying it's okay for politicians to speak straight, right? It's okay for them to talk straight, right? And she asked me about this particular moment right here with the VP because I had commented on the moment and she saw me uh, comment on, commenting on it. And I was saying how 
Yeah, because uh, the VP goes, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Yes, you no, should. You should have said you that. You should 100% say that. So I look to the crowd, I go, how many people in here are legal gun owners? More than half the crowd. We in New Orleans. More than half the crowd yeah. raises their hand. I go, if somebody comes in your breaks in your house tonight, what you going to do? Shoot them. So you're talking just like the people. Bro, that is a the problem, though. What's the problem? <clears throat> that that's everybody's reaction to shoot. I mean, I get it, Chris, but... You have two daughters. If somebody breaks into your house and you have a gun, you're going to defend yourself. I don't have to think about it as a hypothetical. I've been in a house while someone broke into it. All right, let's I've make been, it. You know, make it somebody more broke into my house Chris. when I was a kid. And Chris, what happened? it was fucking terrifying. And if, if you, you had, had a, gun, a gun, you would have bucked off. My dad said if I had a gun, I, I mean, my, I mean, it, I'm still traumatized by it. But like, my dad fought the guy off. Yeah. He should have had a gun. The cops came, heard screaming and breaking and you know we got the guy in the cop car my mom attacked the cop car i mean it was a whole scene you know what car? the cops had what guns guns yeah well so the real shit was i was barricaded in my sister's room and how old were you i was like seven or eight i was you was old enough to fight chris you should have helped you that yeah why are you <laughs> you should have yeah. helped you Yo, step grab up, the nunchucks bro. and go help your fucking yeah it was chris. a it was a bad scene i mean <laughs> it was very bad shit. You were in New York? I was in Philadelphia. I was in my room. My mom woke me up in the middle of the night, said someone's in the house with an axe. Come with me. With an axe? Yeah, a guy they... broke in with an axe. And I was like, what? And she dragged me into my sister's room. I lay on the floor of my sister's room. My mom barricaded herself against the door. All I, my sister had a big canopy bed. All I wanted to do was get under the bed. Yeah. And I was so terrified. It was two feet away. I could not move. And my mom is like up against the door, and then the door starts shaking. And she's like, like some shining shit. And he's yeah. like hitting the axe through the fucking and door. And she starts going, He's trying to get in the room. He's trying to get in the room. And the door is like shaking and pounding and pounding and pounding. And I'm like, Just get under the bed. Just get. I couldn't get under the bed. All this like grab a lamp, hide, be like, couldn't move, paralyzed. And finally, the door starts literally coming off the hinges. And I just see a guy come in with a gun. I just see a gun, and I'm like, well, it's over. I'm like, Who had the gun? It was a cop. So what happened was my dad had fought the dude off. My mom was shaking because she was so scared. She started making the door shake. The co and then she started screaming, he's coming in the room. The cops and my dad had already tackled the guy. They thought there was a second dude in the house. Oh. So they ran back into the house. But the scareder she got, the more the door started shaking. And then they really did kick down. The door and I just saw the cop come with the gun and everything was fine. But keyword gun. gun. Okay, but my point is also your dad. That was very brave shout out of to him. Your dad, my, man. my dad very specifically didn't have a gun, and I we used to. My dad had a town watch. We used to drive around our neighborhood with a little walkie-talkie, and he, we did. He had like a neighborhood. I, I bet your dad wish he had a gun in that moment. And I said to my dad, "Why don't you have a gun?" And he goes, "If I get a gun, I'm gonna fucking kill somebody." I don't want to kill anybody. You're not going to kill nobody if they don't try to break in your he house. He made citizens arrests. He called in crimes. He got awards for the mayor of Philadelphia. He did all this shit, but he never got a gun. I think it's perfectly... Listen, I believe in common sense gun reform. I don't believe people should have, you know, weapons that they use in the military to kill, you know, hundreds of people at once. But I'm still... I believe in 2A. I believe in having firearms in your house to be able to protect yourself. I believe in having firearms in your car to be able to protect yourself nowadays. It's tough. I get I get the instant. Trust me. But if my dad had a gun, he would have blown that guy's head off. And? Good. Might have saved fuck, somebody else. With, a, with an axe. He did yeah. come with, with an With your axe. two young kids in there. I don't give a fuck. God, God bless him. I, 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 by the way, I don't even think that's something you got to repent for. Nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He protected like, your family. Like, like they, he broke into your house, Chris. You don't got a problem killing bugs when they come in your house. Yeah. A fucking animal come in your house, you'll fucking be ready to slaughter it. Peter on your ass. Right, but a human comes in your house yeah. with a fucking axe, and you got remorse for him. What do you think that dude would have done with that axe if he could have got the y'all? Uh, Hundred percent, gonna fucking Man, kill us. Fuck him. Okay, so I think we're on the same page here. That this Kamala moment was a great Fantastic. moment. Then she apologized for it, and we're like, ugh, darn it. Well, she didn't really apologize. She just said, "I probably shouldn't have said that. My team will clean clean it up tomorrow." My thing is, what's wrong with speaking the language of the people? Well, what's I, wrong with real human emotion? So here's the thing. This is, not, this is what I think is happening right now. I don't think anybody's on the plot, but I think the Republican... I think when Trump ran the first time, he knew exactly what his base needed. 
Like he spoke to. I wouldn't even just say the base. Well, I, I, I was trying to be really nuanced. I think he knew what people needed at the at the time. He, he the first time he ran, he was on the money. He was pinpoint accurate. Yeah, there was some wild shit that he was saying, but he was also a mouthpiece for so many people who just didn't feel like they could communicate their feelings. But he tapped in perfectly. Second, he was a little bit off. Third, he's even more off. He's just off the it's scent. Over, guys. It's, Regardless if it's over or not, but right because things can happen a week before election, two weeks yeah, before election. Still, he can you still win. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think he's gonna win. Really, Chris? Okay, and I want to get to your. I want to. I want you to explain that. But what I'm saying is, don't you feel right now like he's 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 a he's a standard deviation away from the zeitgeist, from the feeling. Like I don't think he's capturing the moment. I told y'all already. He doesn't want to do this anymore. That might be the case. I don't <laughs> think Kamala's capturing the moment. I don't think she's I don't on think it, she's but he's the, the furthest away from it that I've experienced in his time in politics. I, I, yeah, it's, it, here's the thing. What you're saying is not wrong in no way, shape, or form. It is very hard to capture the moment as a politician. I've only seen it three times in my lifetime. Barack. Bill Clinton. Bill and Trump in 2016. And, and we weren't around for Reagan, but I imagine Reagan. Yeah, I, was, I don't remember the Reagan, but I'm talking about when, as my adult life, yeah. three people that captured the moment. That's why I keep telling folks, man, Bill, uh, I'm supporting the vice president, but this don't feel like Obama in 08. No. It actually feels more like Hillary in 2016. Just not. Where it's like all signs are pointing to the polls are saying like, and the polls are not even saying that. The polls are saying it's tied pretty much, right? But like every now and then you'll see the VP get up 4%, 7%. It seemed like she should win, but that's what we thought in 2016 as well. 2008, you couldn't go nowhere without Barack Obama mania. Yeah, Black you knew people, it was white be. people, gay people, straight people. It seemed like everybody was on board with Barack. So yeah. much so that we didn't even pay attention to the other side that was fuming. Yeah. The side that Fox News riled up for eight years. The side that was ready to go vote for somebody like Trump by the time 2016 came around. Because we were just so enamored by President Obama. Clinton, I wasn't even old enough to vote. I don't I wasn't old enough to vote with Clinton. No. That was 94, yeah. right? But I remember how people felt about Bill Clinton. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember people talking about Bill Clinton. I remember people talking about how great the economy was four years after Clinton, eight years after Clinton. I remember that. No. So those guys, to me, captured the moment. Even Trump in 2016. He captured He captured it. the moment. Like, Hillary did not capture the moment in 2016. She was the most qualified. She was the person everybody thought was just a shoe in to get it. But he captured the so moment. So the question right now is... What is the moment? I think America is its most fractured right now. And I think the internet is partially responsible because it allows people to operate within their little bubbles. And their little bubbles are their entire world. And that's the only thing that matters to them. That's right. But now there's a hundred little bubbles. So how do you capture the sentiment? Easy. Go. You capture the moment by doing what we just talked about doing. You come back to the center because there's some, there, there might be some good things over there and there might be some good things over here. And if you nowadays, most of us are paying attention to both sides, right? That's why things have shifted so much, right? Like, gosh, man, uh, they're saying that 22% of black people are going to, you know, vote vote, vote for Trump. And, you know, uh, uh, these, these women that voted for Trump in 2016 and 2020 are, are leaving Trump now. They're leaving the party. And you see these Latinos vote for Trump. Everything's all in influx, right? And the reason everything's all in influx is because everybody's tired of being way over here and way over there. It's the people that are right here in the middle, right here in the center, speaking common sense like Kamala just did yeah. by saying, if you break into my house, I own a gun, I'm going to shoot you. If you just have some common sense, talking about the economy, talking about making people safe, if you're just keeping it there, you ain't talking about no wild shit about eating no dogs. Yeah. You ain't telling me that, yeah. you know, this is a, this is a girl, this is a, uh, what, I can't even remember what the fuck I was going to, this is a, this is really a, you were born a girl, but you can have it. Men can have it. You know what the fuck I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, Men can yeah, have it. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're not having none of those conversations. Yeah. We're just talking common sense yeah. that all humans, regardless of what your sexuality is, your gender identity, yeah, yeah. your religion, race, can you put some money in my pocket? That's it. Can you keep me safe? Yeah. That's all I care about. Yeah. The return to center is meeting the moment. Yeah. Ra radicalism is exhausting On after a while. On either side. Oh, it is just, you can do it. It's enticing. It's fun. It's a race. 
you're going through articles and it's telling you all the fucking horrible things the CIA did and you're reading about the Federal Reserve and you're like, what the fuck is this? You're reading, well, did we land on the moon or not? Like, what is all this information? And all I care about is how much is eggs. But at the end of the day, you how much? How much eggs. is the light bill? You know what I'm saying? And all that other stuff. It rouses you up to a point where you're like, yo, I got too much cortisol in my system right oh now. I need to chill the fuck out. I need to separate. I'm telling you, I think Americans are a little exhausted. And I think we're exhausted of the rhetoric of, that's like, America's falling apart. It's awful. It's our country still. My guy, Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan from Ohio. He says it all the time. He represents the exhausted majority. Yeah. The people who are just tired. He's a Democrat. Yeah. Tried and true Democrat. Yeah. But he's, he, what he's saying, what he, we're saying right now, he's been saying for years. By the way, would have made a great VP pick, by the way. He said, he's the exa- we're the exhausted majority. Everybody's just tired. They're tired, bro. That's it. I'm tired of us. T- I'm tired of politicians telling me how horrible America is. Tell me why it's great. I loved, honestly, like, Trump's Make America Great Again had positivity. He shrouds it in criticism, but he's when he starts talking about we're going to build the greatest economy, we're going to build the greatest military, that gets Americans excited. Like people came to this country because they want greatness. American excellence is important to us. We expect to win. We expect to be number one and we expect to be the best. When you start telling us why we're going to be the best, we get excited. When you start telling us everything is fall apart and it sucks and we have to change and we have to accept not being the best, whatever that fucking rhetoric is, we are tuning it out and we are not happy. Yeah, I think I think America first hits harder than Magadha. Because, mm. and, and that, that's one of his slogans too, because you'll have people who will be like, well, when was America ever great totally for black people? When was it great for gay people? When was it great yeah, for women? Yeah. But America first, everybody can get behind that. I like because that. Because folks look and they see... All of this money going over here for this, and all yeah. of this money going over there for that. And, I want some you know, of that. Like yeah. the, 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 the migrants are coming in, and they're getting these resources before people that have been born here. Yeah. America first, first, I think, hits harder than uh, yeah. MAGA. And, and, and I've been hearing a lot of America first rhetoric. Really? From the VP as well. Now we talking. That's all I'm saying. Now we talking. Why do you think she's going to lose, Chris? Talk to me. Well, I mean, look, I, I, I think what you guys are talking about You don't about hope is- she loses, though. No, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly supporting her. But, like, I think the people's frustration is real. I think people really do feel like the system is broken. I think the system is broken. I don't think it's, you know, a false sense. I think they've foolishly, I think Trump's a fraud, and they've put their trust that he's an outsider who's going to do something in him. So I think he, even if he's, to Andrew's point, going much further right than he has in the past, like, he's still tapping in to something that most Americans feel. I just think they're wrong in putting that faith in. And the other thing is like, I don't think people are gonna vote for a woman, man. Like, I think that's the big unsexist Sexist pig, you. Yeah, bro. I'm voting for her. I cannot believe you, Chris. I'm voting for her. Be the change you wanna see in the world. I'll certainly be the change, but like, that concerns me. Like. Why? That they won't vote for her, because I think she's a better candidate. No, 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 but why, uh, why do you think people won't vote for a woman? I can't put my finger on it. I mean, the 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 part of it that I don't understand is why women don't seem to support her more. I think they're starting to now. Um, I used to feel that way. I used to feel like I used to feel like America would never vote for a woman. But the reason I push back on that rhetoric is because we saw sixty five million people vote for Hillary Clinton. Mm-hmm. Like she beat, she did, she did, she won the popular vote by more than three million votes. If there was no such thing as the electoral college, now, Hillary now Clinton make would be it a woman of color. Huh? Now make it a woman of color. I mean, they voted for a black guy as well. I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I think, I think America is a lot more progressive than we uh, give it credit for. Exactly. I think that's. I agree with you. I think that's a lot of rhetoric right there. I, I will, I'll be very happy to be proven wrong. Let's do some if any memes necessary, man. What's up, man? S- salute the uh, salute the Cardi and Offset. Yo, that shit. Yeah, man. That shit makes me feel so good about my marriage. I think we gotta, I think we gotta thank sometimes. Like, remember, you ever watch that show about the people who have drug addictions? Which uh, one? Where they do an intervention. It's called intervention. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it's really tragic, but you watch it, you go, man, my life is great. Like, you feel grateful for what you got. When I see Offset and Cardi like fighting publicly like this, and I see how like toxic and messy, and then like I compare it to like a little argument me and my wife got into i'm like yo i am we are lucky we are blessed you we gotta are great. remember yeah cardi and austin have been together for a long time 
Or like, like, or they've been married for, I don't know how long they've been married, but they've been together for like seven years, eight years. Yeah. So, you know, you don't know what your relationship's gonna look like seven, eight years from now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? The yeah. only thing that I wish that they would do is just keep it offline. You know what I mean? Because yeah. here's the thing. Uh, Offset can't win. He's the guy, right? There's nothing he could say that would ever get people on his side, right? And he's been, you know, caught out there, like, right? Caught out there, uh, 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 caught out there doing dirt. And so the perception of him is, is he's fucked up, you know, Cardi, you can do better, yada, yada, yada. Man, we shouldn't even have any opinion about their situation. Why? Because we shouldn't know about it. Well, like they should be having those conversations amongst each other. They yeah. should be going to therapy because the reality is these two individuals clearly care about each other. You don't do this to people. Oh, yeah, they're hurt. You don't care about. Well, what, what's the context of this? Man, too much. I don't even know where to begin because I don't even know where it started. I thought I knew where it started, but so I real, didn't. real quick, if they handle it publicly, though. Mm hmm. It's not peculiar for the internet to have an opinion on oh, it. No, 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 no. Like, it's, 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 it's part of the course. They are choosing to Absolutely. handle it in, you know. Absolutely. A public setting. I just so wish the they public, did well, it. I, Same, same, yeah. same, same. I mean, it's wildly entertaining. Like, Cardi going on her rants. It's no fun when, when, when mama got the gun, right? It's no fun when I'm slanging right? Hmm. Now is now is now we now we're going to court 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 war, right? And I told you, get off my phone. Give a f I'm tired. Cardi and Alex Jones have the same, like, you can't stop watching ability. <laughs> right? Like, when she starts talking, like, it's Dr. Umar, Alex Jones, and Cardi B. When they go on live, you are mesmerized. Nah, you cannot nah, she turn got, it she away. She got star power. Just, oh, my She's God. always had this. This headline says, Offset claims a strange wife Cardi B slept with another man while pregnant. Tell the truth. Jesus Christ, man. Mm. I See, I, I wouldn't, I would block, I wouldn't want nobody to know that. Yeah. I'm blocking all the noise out. Yeah. If I love my wife, if my wife loves me, I'm not bringing it to the internet because I don't need none of y'all motherfuckers' opinions on our shit. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? I don't need none of y'all opinion on our shit because if we get back together a year from now, you know, or six months from now, two years from now, I don't need y'all judgment. Mm. I don't need you pointing at her saying, you stupid motherfucker, and I don't need you pointing at me saying, you stupid motherfucker, because... Mm. Unconditional love, Schultz, really is unconditional. Mm. We got to give people, to, us as men, we got to give our women the same grace that they give us when we fuck up. Yeah. You don't believe any of this. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you, say, you say that now. I mean, yeah. You but say that now. You love hard. your wife, bro. No, no, I'm just saying it's hard to like... I I also empathize. Listen, I empathize with Cardi, right? Like it's got to be tragic. You're you know, getting cheated on. You continue to forgive this person. You have more children with them. They keep on cheating. That's fucked up. But I also empathize with with Offset, where it's like someone's poking. You're like, man, you can't let that happen. Yeah, but you got to have accountability as the person who may have drove them to do that. Yeah, but someone's poking. Jesus Christ. Oh, but, oh <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can't really like you. You're gonna feel the way about that if somebody's poking. Christ, man. I mean, you can bring Jesus into this all you want, but you know. No, I started to say something just now, but I, that <laughs> wouldn't make no sense to say. And I know well, Jesus is watching us. He is watching us. He's definitely watching us, man. He's definitely watching us. And he was watching. No, you no, know. nah, nah, I was just. Uh, I'm just gonna shut up. I'm not even gonna. Yeah, say I just say because nah, we can always no, edit it. No, I we don't even want to edit it. I don't even want. God knows, God is testing me right now. <laughs> God is like, I want you to make that joke, and I want you to see what happens, okay? Because it's really, it's about Jesus, and I don't want, I don't want no smoke with my guy. Shout Respect Jesus. You Respect, know what I mean? man. Um, but for real, I want Cardi and Offset just to just keep this off the internet, man. That's the worst thing when you bring in strangers to your situation because. <sighs> I, I'm watching a world where everybody is so caught up in the internet. We just talked about political parties being caught up in the internet. We just talked about one party 
Republican Party being caught up in conspiracies. We talk about the Democrats being caught up in what the internet is telling them that they should think about yeah. gender and I think all of it. Like it's it's everybody's too caught up in the internet, man. I don't stop bringing these strangers into your life because they love seeing y'all crash out. I wonder if it's like nobody's gonna ever have any grace for millionaires. You know that, right? Oh, no, no. We don't have no mercy for millionaires. Oh, we all. they love seeing this. Yeah, they love seeing yeah, Cardi yeah. and Offset angry yeah. and upset. The last thing they want to do is see you enjoying your uh, life. Uh, uh, they want to see you miserable. Yeah. Nah, yeah, you may have millions of dollars, but you're going to cry in that yeah. Maybach. <laughs> like, literally, that's what they want. Yeah. Don't give them that, man. Don't give it to them. Yeah, it's a... Uh, and they don't owe the public anything. Nothing. You don't owe the public explanation. I wonder what happens. Like, I wonder if they just share so much of their life with the public they think is normal or if they feel, like, embarrassed. You know, one of them does something publicly, so the other one feels embarrassed, so they feel like they need to... I'm sure. Like, like what? What? Because you're talking about a husband and wife here now. Yeah, yeah. Like, what like what you're motivates them? that response publicly? You think? Because it comes from somewhere psychologically. You're like, uh, is it? I'm not going to be embarrassed. Let me share my side, so I'm not embarrassed. I don't know. I think. Well, Cardi, to me, more so than Offset, came up on the internet. So that's kind of her thing. This is just how she handles. Yeah, things, this kind of like, this this is kind of her thing. Yeah. Um. I think, I, I mean, honestly, man, Offset might have just snapped. You know? He might have just got pushed to the pushed to the edge. Like, I, I can't take it no more, you know? I don't know. Um, I just wish them both the best, man. Because, I, I, like, this is a husband and wife. That's the other thing. Like, can you imagine having to go through this with your wife publicly, yeah. bro, as a man? Cardi's so measured, though. She's so funny. Like, she'll say... You know, you, you 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 can't handle me. I'm too good for you. You know what I mean? You can't ah. do this. But then she'll also go back. Now, I'm not going to fuck on your ops. You know what I mean? That's not, that's below me. I have like street code, so I don't care about that. I'm not going to go do that. And you're also not really a bad dad. You're kind of a good dad. But fuck you. Besides, <laughs> she's a very like disciplined person with her criticism of, we, of we, him. We have to, we also have to talk about like, regardless of like, don't emasculate your... I can't... I'm about to say don't emasculate your partner. You can only emasculate the man. But don't tear down your man or your woman. Meaning, yeah. if... Whatever position you're in, right? Like, let's say the woman makes more money than you or yeah. the man makes more money than the woman. I Don't throw that in people's face. Like, don't say things like, you know, you beneath me, you know... Well, I don't... I, never was on my level. I think... I, think I, I don't think she's saying for that reason. She's saying... It's actually quite... An interesting observation. She's like, the reason you need to fuck on these girls is because you don't think that you're the man around me. You don't have the self esteem to be with me. That's why you need to go fuck on these girls so that they make you feel good. She's, like, I'm such a boss bitch, and it makes you feel insecure. Yeah. So you got to go run and get some pussy. And now I don't know if that's a situation with Offset, but that is the situation with a lot of guys, especially guys who are with very successful women. They sometimes feel insecure about their position, but why, so they got to go be king somewhere. But why are we acting like Offset isn't a member of one of the greatest hip hop groups of all time? She's, the Migos bigger than the Beatles, bro. I agree. The Migos are way I they, agree. like like Paul and John. And yeah. all, they don't got nothing on. They, they got Quavo and nothing Offset on Quavo. So why are we acting offset. like Offset not Offset? Like, he, like, 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 like and, and what did Chris Rock always say? A man is only as, as faithful, faithful as, as his, his options. options. Offset's still a young man. I'm not giving him no excuses. No yeah, excuses. Yeah. I think that, you know. But you got plenty of options. You're a faithful black man now. I don't think I have as much options as I used to. You don't think you have more? I, I, I To be honest with you, if I did, I wouldn't know. You That's know, what I'm saying. Yeah, you're faithful. Only, you only know when you entertain them. Like, you know. Yeah. You knew you knew me. You knew me back in the day. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm listen. I'm bullshitting. I had I never had nothing. I don't, I'm just. But I'm just saying. Yeah, but hypothetically, hypothetically, you did. when I was entertaining it. Hypothetically, if you did, you, when you I know. was entertaining it. See, it's all about the entertaining. Yeah, yeah. For men and women. Yeah. If you don't entertain, yeah, it won't show up. It's kind of like uh, you were you were an entertainer back in the day. I bro. was always ready to perform. You were the greatest showman. I was a, I was one of the greatest. You Barnum and Bailey. I was one of the greatest shows on earth. It was because I saw you walking them elephants <laughs> around the hotel rooms. Bro. It was. I said, I said, holy shit! Charlemagne done robbed one from the zoo. What the hell? Who is this P five four funding? But I was through the hotel room. And that, but that's what it's, 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 there's, there's a. Um, it's kind of like if whatever you fly, whatever you fertilize will grow. Will grow. 
Yeah. So if you fertilize Thank that, God you didn't fertilize anything. No, no I stopped fertilizing. Thank God. No, no, no. no, not, no thank no. God. You only fertilize one. You only got one garden. I only got one you garden. Only got one I garden. only got one garden. Yeah. It's literally about <laughs> what you entertain. Yeah. Like, if you don't entertain it, 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 it won't, it'll cease to exist. I also think that, uh, I think that, yeah, and uh, Offset got this, but, the, you know, there are certain guys that they might not have, like, creative uh, outlets to uh, get the confidence and self-esteem. And they might not have the same versions that, like, let's say we do. You know, you come well, on a podcast, yeah, you do music, it. No, no, yeah. he does it all. He yeah. does. So I don't know if he has that excuse. He can go perform in shows. He can feel good about the things that he's creating. There are people who might just work a regular job that they hate and they don't feel like the man at home and they need to feel like the man somewhere. And their fucking rec league basketball team is not playing well. They're, all the other things in their life are not going well and they don't have a place to get self-esteem from. And that's on them. They got to figure it out. But I think that's when they start... Seeking that attention elsewhere. But I, pr I promise you, man, when I pass away, you know, 50 years from now, because I'm going to die at 101. I already know this. I really do want to have a conversation with God about women, bro. About women? Yes. What you want to ask him? You created the most beautiful thing that we've ever seen. We can say what we want, and I this I'm I'm really I really mean this. This ain't no pandering. Women make the world go round. Mm. Everything we do is for women. Mm. We work out, we stay in shape, we get our haircuts, we try to wear nice clothes, we try to be successful yep. because we want to impress women. Mm. For the most part, I'm not, I'm, yeah. in the LGBTQ community, everything isn't about y'all. We're having a conversation about about us, heterosexual men that like women, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And, and by the way, even on the flip side, but even on the flip side of that, everything ain't about y'all. It's not. Like, I'm sitting back like, I, ain't gonna, I, yeah, yeah. I love y'all that listen to Brilliant Idiots, but just listen to what I'm saying yes. for a second. Yeah. He created all of these different women. Mm. None of them were the same. Mm. So much variety. You gotta try. They no. <laughs> you gotta no. try. No. no. Oh, sorry. No. Wait, wait. What, what, what are you? <laughs> no. Wait, wait, wait. Listen. Variety. You just had the candy store and each bucket got its own little sour. Yeah, variety is the spice of life. It, and we love spice. And we love life. And, right? we, love, and yeah. we love variety. And we love variety. Right? So you made you gotta... all of these different women and then mm -hmm. we live in this society, this system mm -hmm. that we get married and we devote all our time to one woman. I love it. Which I'm, is th best. I thank God for thank my God. wife. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But why is thank it a fight? You. Why is it no, a fight? No, I'm not saying I'm fighting. I'm just saying, am I. why is it a struggle for so many people? Yeah, why is to that? To be with one woman. Why? Why do you think? Because of the variety. The variety is made. out there. It's you so much saying? variety. Think about how confused we are when we walk in the grocery store. Sometimes. I'm retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retarded. I don't. <laughs> sometimes I'm I in the grocery store like, Look, you know, can you, you guys? Oh, man, have you ever pulled up to a fast food restaurant and looked at that motherfucking menu uh, and you're like, God damn, what do I want? All of it. <laughs> Why do I want all of it? That's crazy. Now, that's not me. That's not me personally. That's not me either. That's not but me at I'm all. I'm just simply saying, God, I got some questions. Hey, listen, we got questions for these other guys that struggle like that. We don't struggle like that. We're obviously yes. here on this podcast. Yes. Uncorruptible. But I do want, I have questions for the brothers that ain't here. I, at least at least maybe I can come back as a spirit. Me too. And talk to some of these guys and say, hey, man. I want to help them. You know what I mean? Why are you so fucking retarded all what the time? What if we get there and God goes... I never told y'all this. <laughs> these bitches made that shit up. What, 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 if, what if God said, hey, these bitches was making up wild shit, bro. I was trying to get y'all to fuck all this pussy y'all made, but y'all listen to these bitches. Oh, Jesus, come here, let me hear you. Hey, let me hey, tell you what you just said, man. Hey, hey, just, they hey, tell lies on you, Jesus. They say you ain't get no pussy down there. They say you didn't fuck no girls. Fuck out of here. He thinks we took our time making them all look different, okay? We gave them this little unique thing that 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 they Jeez. just love they love it so much they put their tongue on it that's it you know what i'm saying and you just not gonna do and it you think you think we made all of these beautiful different variety of women for you to be with one what? for the rest of your life <laughs> come on in man come on come on in man. my son was <laughs> water and wine that was the first freak off <laughs> and, then, and then and then god says that's your, that's your mansion over there walk in there you walk in there, it's 20 women. You're like, the Muslims were right. They were right the whole <laughs> the time. Were right they the were whole right the whole time. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs>
Oh my God. I'm just saying. Uh, this is the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yeah. It's just a hypothetical, something for you Yo, to think about. That's all it is. We're just asking the questions for the brothers that struggle with fidelity. We don't. No, because I, I'm going to tell you why I don't. Uncorruptible. I'm gonna Incorruptible? Incorruptible. I'm going to tell you why I don't struggle with fidelity, and I've said this a million times, because I see how great my life is when you are focused mm. on your one woman. Everything else is a distraction. It is. I've never felt more stable in my life. I've never felt more focused in my life. Man. And <clears throat> if you are a guy who feels like they can't be with one woman, why don't you just be honest with your wife? What? <laughs> <laughs> What's this guy doing right now? Yo? Be honest with what? your wife. What does that mean, though? What have do you mean? A, have be, be honest. Have a real conversation. And say what? What would you say? It's like, yo, man. I'm going to be out here. There's a lot of this variety, bro. There's a, <laughs> of, there's a lot of variety in this street. a lot of variety you know I mean? out here. And you might be pleasantly surprised. What do you think she'll say? I have no idea, but I think that honesty is always the best policy. And I think that if you and your partner are really in sync as one couple, as one unit, if that's really your best friend, you should be able to have you know, uh, those type of conversations with them. Now, I would caution you, she might also go, you know what, there is a lot of variety out there. And you gotta deal with that. That shit is different. You gotta deal with nah, that. Nah, we don't wanna hear that at all. Sometimes that shit is like therapy, those shows. Sometimes you just gotta go sit down with somebody and talk about it. Huh. Even with, the, with with your, you know, desires, or, you know, your, your eye wander a little bit. Because, yeah, you know, you get to a point where you're so faithful, you get mad even if you just peek. You're like, oh shit. Wait, who's still human. mad? Who's mad? Who gets you mad? You get mad at yourself. Wait, why would you get mad? You just feel like you're doing something you ain't got no business doing. But you're still human is what I'm saying. And you're not yeah. perfect. You know what's funny? Like, you know me, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a faithful dude, right? You always have been, though. I've been good. Yes. I've been good. I, I feel like that makes me like a good husband. <laughs> And there's that there's well, that great, there's that great Chris Rock joke it, it, where the guy's oh, like I take yeah. care of my kids yeah, yeah, you're yeah, supposed yeah, yeah. to like right. but there is a, it is a funny thing like me be, since so many dudes are not faithful the fact that I am I'm like man my wife lucky look at me yes. you, you want some extra credit I want extra credit for right. doing what I'm supposed are to do which is wrong yes. no it's not so okay break that down this October will be eight. that's that's unfair this October will be eight years for me. You've been eight years sober? Eight years motherfucking sober. That's October 2016 was the last time I did some bullshit. White girl? No. That's what, hey, bro. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Keep it true, bro. Keep it true. You know what I mean? Let's go. But, hey, but guess what? I want a coin. You deserve a coin. I want a fucking coin. You deserve a what coin. What do they give you in AA? I want something. And by the way, it ain't something that need to be celebrated widely. Mm. Just amongst us as men. We need to be able to be like, yo, that and guy. We should, and we should encourage each other. Yeah. Like, yo, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not even joking when I say this. Andrew was one of the first faithful guys that I met. Wow. Andrew, and, and, and I'm not going to say the other guy's name because I don't know if he's still faithful. <laughs> <laughs> but you know who you are. I'll text you later. Because I've told him this a million times. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm just, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I heard some things in the wind. He, had, he had a good run. Yeah, I don't know. But that encouraged me. I'm like, oh shit. Like it's possible. It's possible and it's dope. Anything is possible. Man, it really is dope. There's nothing I like more than being with my wife, enjoying life, you know. Been, reaping reaping the, 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 the fruits of our labor, celebrating our kids. Like, I love it. It's dope. That's my best friend. We've been together since fucking 1998. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, like, I'm good. I'm cool. I also do think it helps to get it all out your system. Like, I think it, it's easier for me just because, like, I didn't, it's not the first person I was ever with. You, the, your, your wife is the first person you're ever with. Like, I had fun. I was out there. I dated. I did all the things I wanted to do. So it's not like I'm looking back on, man, I wish I had a threesome. Or, man, I wish I did these things. Like, I don't have to look back and say that. So I'm excited about this part of my life where I get to be, you know, all in and completely committed. I 100% agree with you. 100%. That's why it's like certain people, it's like I tell dudes all the time, you better be who you say you are. Mm. Because there's a lot of dudes out here who not who they say they are. Ooh. And they get on their self-righteous high horses and they start talking about, 
you know, pr protecting women and this and that. And mm -hmm. my whole thing with that is I'm with you. Mm -hmm. But you've got to protect what you got at home. Got to protect because, what you and, got and at home. And that's what I mean when I say about being honest, right? Because when you're honest with your significant other, you are protecting her peace. Mm -hmm. Because what hurts your woman's feelings is when she finds out you're not who you say you are. You break her heart. You know what I'm saying? You 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 cause her her mind to be all frazzled. You emotionally fucked with her. You're not protecting her. No, you're so not. Don't talk to me about protecting the other women. If you're not protecting what's at home, hey, you're gonna protect that's what's at home. I that's know. all I'm simply saying. Like, that is very important. But sometimes it's seductive. You know, there's a lot of so there's a lot of money in in, in clicks in in saying you protect women online. Oh yeah, it's a Absolutely. lot of because there's a lot of women who want to be protected, you know. A hundred percent. And I can't tell. I can't tell if you know everybody who says it doesn't do it. But you know, I know. I know. Uh, I, I just want people. To, I want people to be who they say they are. You got to be focused on that. Got to be focused. You gotta, on I'm, that. I'm dead serious. And when you say you protect women, you got to always protect them. Like. You can't, you can't... Protect the ones you got at home. Yeah, you know. I'm telling you, like, we don't think about it like that, but if you've been a, a person who's either, like, like, like myself, who's caused my woman pain mm. because of my infidelity, mm. or watched my mom mm. go through pain because of my dad's infidelity, mm. you realize how much you're not protecting that person's peace. Mm. You got to protect your wife's peace. You got to protect your woman's peace. You got to protect your woman's heart. You're not doing that if you out there creeping on her. Uh, that's a fact. That's it. So I would rather people just be honest. But it's easier to, to say you're protecting women from other people. Yeah, but what's it's, going that's on? That's a way easier task, yeah. but what's going on at home? What's going on at home? That's I, all I'm saying. I agree with you, man, 100%. But, but I, it's just, you know, we, we always gravitate to the easier thing to do. You know what I mean? That's why I think, you should, that's why I think we should be, if, if you're feeling that way mm -hmm. about other women, just have the conversation. Just, just make it open. Make it open. That's man. it. Because you don't, it's not like you want to leave. I don't think. Plus, right? It's not just your partner. For me, at least. Okay, talk to me, Chris. It's your kids. Your kids got to see yeah, it too, yeah, man. Right. That, yes, that would be sir. my biggest fear. Yes, sir. You know, like... God forbid yes, they start sir. to see it because that's going to be their expectation Oof. of relationship. Like, yes, think about... Yeah. Like, you had to unlearn what an expectation of relationship was. My daddy, when I confronted my dad for cheating on my mom, he literally said to me, oh, you only got one girlfriend? Yeah. One day you're going to understand. That fucked me up. Yeah. Yeah. It, yes. it fucked me up. I'm like, my whole, I'm like, damn, I'm not supposed to be one, more than one girl. Yeah. Like, even, even though I like being with one woman. Yeah. But it's like, he fucked me up with that. So, yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Let's pay some bills. <laughs> what uh, we got? What we got, Chris? Uh, Blue Two. All right, guys, let's take a break for a second, guys. Because this episode has been brought to you by Blue Two. Deliver the best dick of your life. You deserve it. Your girl deserves it. Everybody in your life deserves it. Your mom deserves it from your dad, okay? They do deserve it, both of them. Blue Chew, same active ingredient that's inside Viagra, Cialis. This is the chewest one that we rock with. It's one that you're going to rock with, and you're going to get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping when you use the code IDIOTS at BlueChew.com, okay? That's it. BlueChew.com, first month free. Pay $5 shipping. Use the code IDIOTS. Enjoy your life. Let them enjoy it, too. Let's get back to the show. Uh, let's do some church announcements. What you got, Show T? Um, okay. Uh, oh, the Life Tour uh, coming to Minneapolis and Milwaukee. Not this week, I'm the next weekend. Uh, we got a few more shows that we've added. Uh, added another one in San Jose. Added a third show in Denver. Uh, added a second show in Cincinnati. Um, we got Portland. Might be sold out. I don't know, theandrewshows.com. Go get the remaining shows and uh, cool announcements in the next uh, week or two. I'm very excited to tell you guys about. Uh, yeah. And how about you, Charlie? Um, uh, my fourth annual Mental Wealth Expo uh, is happening October 12th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. You know, I, put, I bring together some of the best psychiatrists and therapists. Dr. Alfie Breland Noble will be there. Dr. Rita Walker will be there. Dr. Jay Barnett will be there. Um, Dr. Cheyenne Bryan will be there. Shaka Sinkor will be there. My man Elliot Connie. Uh, Tyrese is going to be there. He's going to be having a conversation with Jason Wilson just about, you know, men being vulnerable. A lot of people want to be involved. Salute to my guy Arnold. He hit me up the other day. 
You know, the baby just launched his mental health in initiative in honor of his brother uh, who committed suicide. Uh, the baby wants to be involved. So Saturday, October 12th, Marriott Marquis, Times Square, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., my fourth annual Mental Wealth Expo. It is a free event, open to all ages. All you got to do is go to mentalwealthexpo.com uh, for details and to register. Uh, I want to sa salute the All The Smoke podcast, my guys, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. I don't know why I don't have a copy of their book here. I just got it in uh, last week, but they have a coffee table book coming out on October the 8th. It is a beautiful, beautiful book, man. Uh, I've said it before. I think every hit podcast, especially if you're a hit podcast who's like pretty guest heavy, should do that. Because it's just a great way, you know, to, to it's just, just a great piece of memorabilia to have, you know, if you're a fan. Like, if you're a fan of the All The Smoke podcast, which so many of y'all are, um, you gotta go pre-order this book. It has... Uh, interviews from the late, great Kobe Bryant. Um, you know, uh, who else is in there? Allen Iverson, Magic Johnson. Hey, you listen to the All The Smoke podcast. Yeah. Kevin Hart. Like every, everybody's yeah. been on All The Smoke podcast. And um, it's, it's got these beautiful pictures and, you know, Matt and Steven's thoughts on some of the conversations and the interviews, you know, even some things that happen behind the scenes. So go get... Uh, the All The Smoke podcast coffee table book. It is out October 8th, but you can pre-order it now wherever you buy books. And salute to All The Smoke podcast. They uh, they just uh, interviewed the vice president. Yeah, they did. They, oh, they had Kamala on? Yeah, they had well, it's, 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 I don't think it's out yet. It comes out, I think it might be out next week. But yeah, they they had they did the conversation already. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I like, I like stuff like that because I like, uh, I think styles make fights, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of times, if you see the vice president, like I think she did a great interview with Stephanie Rule on MSNBC this week. But Stephanie Rule is a political pundit. journalist, a political pundit. Yeah. So the question she's asking, somebody like the vice president can pretty much prepare for. Mm. But with Stephen and Matt, it's an unorthodox situation because they're not coming with political questions, mm. so to speak. And if they are, they're speaking in their way. Mm. So you can't just use your scripted talking points, talking points yep. with somebody like them. So I'm interested in seeing that. Plus, the, the VP is good with that. Like, I don't like that's the frustration, right? The frustration is you don't have to stick to these scripted talking points because I, you're good. Yeah, trust yourself. Just trust yourself. But she got so many people in her ear. Like, oh if you say God. this wrong, it's going to do uh, blah, blah, blah. And then, by the way, the people that are in her ear are so fucking scripted. Yeah, that they don't they, know no better. Because, because. They thought they were running somebody that they literally had to hold the up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so I would have got, and, and I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just speaking. I don't know who all of these people are, but I would have gotten rid of so many of them. If you worked for Biden and you had a game plan for Biden, yep. you got to go. We got to put together somebody that can run a game plan for me over the next uh, 50 days. Bro. Yo, I need your help with this joke. What's the joke? It, the idea is funny, but it's just not funny yet. I don't think we should work it out on the podcast. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, in trouble, no, 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 it, it, no, it's, 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 it's about the uh, eating cats and dogs thing. Okay. Okay. Cause I was in Ohio this weekend. All right. Okay. I had shows. I was in uh, Cincinnati and Cleveland. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I'm Cincinnati. Fried canine. No, no, no. But I'm in Cincinnati and Cleveland. Okay. okay. And I'm hearing all this stuff with the Haitians and cats and dogs. Yeah. Right. I don't have the punchline for it, but this is the funny part to me. Okay. And everybody's like, why are so many Haitians moving to Ohio? Cause that's where Springfield was. That's where I said, like, why are all these Haitians moving here? I don't know how to make it funny yet, but this is what I find funny, is the two football teams, Springfield is located in between um, Cincinnati <laughs> and Cleveland, <laughs> okay? <laughs> the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. Oh, God. Okay? Cats and dogs, <laughs> okay? I don't know how to make this funny, but... It is pretty ironic. There is, you know what though, and there's the Cincinnati Wildcats. No, that's Kentucky Wildcats. No, isn't it a Cincinnati Bearcats, team? Bearcats. 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 Oh, okay. But still, like the dog pound, the Cleveland dog pound, the Browns are the dog pound. Right. Yes. And Bengal, a Bengal is a cat. There, it's literally cats and dogs. I, and I, I mean, it can't be any more perfect. <laughs> but I don't know how to make it funny yet. It's almost too obvious. Like it's kind of crazy that that happened, no? I mean, I laughed when you just bought, when you uh, gave me that observation because yeah. I didn't think about it. You yeah, know what I'm saying. Well, what do you think the meeting was when the Haitians decided which place to go? Like, what what do you think they were choosing? 
What were they choosing? Yeah, I mean, like, they're probably going through the different animals. They're like, all right, Miami's got the dolphins. So that's a little gamey. Like, like, what, I mean, like, what do you think? By the way, we don't believe Haitians were eating cats and dogs. No, of but course it's the not. Absurdity. It's crazy. It's, yes, yes, yes. It's the absurdity that the of football teams that. just happen to have yes. a cat and dog yes. as their Hilarious. mascots. Yeah, I'm going to let you work that out, bro. I'm not the comedian. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous, but in it, there's something. <laughs> All right. I'm with you. It's not funny yet. I know. It's good. It can get there, though. Uh, Shannon Sharp will no longer respond to negativity. Let Uh-oh. Me, what happened with let Shannon? Let me see this post. Let me see this post, Art. Let's see what he's talking about. Shannon Sharp says he will no longer be responding to negativity. Make it, make it a bigger pause. I can't freaking see. Uh, okay. September 25th, 2024 at 6 6 p.m. Shannon Sharp says, I will no longer respond to any negativity. It's not that serious for me. I've got kids and I would upset with, I would upset with them if they responded in this manner. This is beneath me. Y'all pray for me though. Um, what, what happened? Why? Oh, okay. So Shannon Sharp said something about Caitlin Clark. Uh, he said, so, somebody tweeted, this is why I said the WNBA has a what about me issue. What does that Happy mean? Shannon calling it out right in front of the one who started it. Can we play that? Stephen A., I no, would be remiss if I didn't say this. A lot of this noise came by people that were sitting on this network. They tried to minimize her. Say, well, you giving her all this credit. What about the women that came before her? What the women came before her, what they did cannot be taken away. That ain't got nothing to do with Caitlin Clark. But there are a lot of people trying to make sure they keep Caitlin Clark in her place because what you're doing, if you give her all this shine, you minimize what they done. Okay, so somebody said, my issue is Shannon Sharp never speaks on the disrespect. The rest of the women of the W experienced always defending Caitlyn. The WNBA disrespect didn't start with Caitlyn. They've been disrespected for years. Caitlyn's buzz made that hate way worse. And people who tried to have the other women's backs got called haters by people like Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith who wanted us to be thankful for ratings boosts. So this is what Shannon responded to or didn't respond to? My whole thing is, man, I don't know why y'all be responding to people on social media, period. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't do it. Yeah, you don't yeah. see me react to nothing. Yeah. I'm yeah. not doing it. I learned my lesson from that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just, Shannon, sure, that's your issue, not mine. I have no issue with anything I've said in regards to WNBA and his players past or present. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about what these strangers think about me. I yeah, really don't. Yeah. And when you're a person who gives their opinion for a living... Shows as we talked about earlier, yeah. people are going to have opinions back. Yeah, you can't be a person that gives their opinion for a living yeah. and expect everybody to agree with you. Not at all. So when they disagree, who gives a fuck? I put on my every yeah. chapter of my book, and every time I'm on social media, I put less discuss. Do you think I'm in the comments discussing? You're not even discussing. I just like the chaos. Yeah, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I like the chaos. Like I, I like yeah. watching y'all sit argue. back and talk about what I say. Yeah, it's what I say. Yeah, I debate my points on brilliant idiots and on Breakfast Club yeah. with whoever's in the room. Yeah, right. And then that's it. And that's it. Yeah. I okay, hear you. No, other than that, you're gonna watch these points yeah. on social media. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome, Charlemagne. Yeah. For the content. You're welcome, yeah. Shannon Sharp, for the content. You're welcome, Andrew Schultz. Yeah. You're welcome, Stephen A. Smith. We give you grist for your mill. Now, here's here's the thing. That this might break a lot of people's hearts. And most of these combos, we don't even give a fuck. We, I don't even I don't even know what's going on. We don't we don't even uh, if you, if you actually, know what's going. We don't care. If you actually pay attention, you're I'll, so angry and shit. We don't even give a fuck about. If you actually pay attention, you'll hear me say that. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck's going on. I'm just talking because we, we got the microphones. Like, I, 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 like, like, right? But that's why you got to be intentional. You are, but uh, shit like this. I don't yeah. Give a like, fuck. Okay. That's I think, actually why group chats are so great. Why? Because we could get it off and everybody Man. knows and nobody gives a and fuck. And everybody's trying to rile each other up in the group chat. Yeah. You know. What yeah, I'm you're trying to say the craziest. Shit. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, like, like I'm, I'm in a group chat the other night. Somebody sends something about Mayor Eric Adams in it. I don't care. But I know what this person cares about. Yeah, man, Caitlyn just got eliminated. <laughs> Caitlyn just got eliminated, bro. <laughs> okay? Just a little too young. Just to get everybody. Yeah. Put some, put some sauce yeah, on it, baby. Fuck up, Now, we like the chaos. The chaos is fun. I like the chaos. But you know our hearts. Our hearts are good. 
And we're here to entertain. Our hearts are good. By the way, Shannon is there to entertain. Stephen A is there to entertain. I'm yeah. not saying that they're not saying what they don't believe. I'm just saying that once they say it on their jobs, yeah. and I mean this to Shannon and everybody else with an opinion, once I say it on my job or my place of business, yeah. I'm not arguing with y'all motherfuckers about this. Yeah. I get paid to argue with Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get paid to argue with Andrew Schultz. I get paid to argue with NB and Jesse yeah. Harris and you know, Lauren LaRosa in there, guess yeah. like that's who I get paid to debate with. I think the annoying thing is like with the WNBA shit, uh, and keep in mind I do not give a fuck about this conversation we're about to have, is that like the only thing that's gonna make them make more money is if the TV ratings go up. That's the only thing that changes the amount of money. Like, look how much these NBA players are about to be billionaires. They're about to make more money than the fucking owners simply because the TV ratings have gone crazy and they are gouging the fuck out of these different networks that are going to play the games. So if you want women to make money, you need the girl that makes the ratings happen. That's right. To be, I, I, you know, give her the Jordan rules. I, give Angel the Jordan rules, too. Yeah. Whoever they're watching, give them the Jordan rules. I, I said that last night. I was like, yo, the WMA got to learn how to rig shit. Facts. Because what's the Caitlin's guy's name? not in the Stern? playoffs now. They need a David, David Stern. Stern. Right. God bless the day. Caitlin's not in the playoffs right now. Angel Reese's not in the playoffs right now. Nah, Asia bro. Wilson is the best player in the WNBA. The Liberty Aces series is going to be great. Mm. But it's like, Caitlin... And Angel was bringing a you lot of eyeballs you to the You need Caitlin in the finals, bro. I do whatever the, you gotta do. And, and I wonder, Rig it. I wonder if the ratings are gonna be are gonna take a little plummet. Of now. course they're gonna. What do you mean wonder? Of course they're gonna. Th Cause, listen, cause, we want to watch Caitlin rig it. I hope this is the highest WNBA playoffs ever. If it's not, we know why. There's no Caitlin Clark. There's no Angel Reese. Now I feel like Angel, Asia. I feel like this has been a breakout year for Asia, which sounds crazy to say because she's a three-time MVP. She's won the championship two times. She's defensive player of the year. She's won all of these different awards. She's very well decorated. Mm. But I feel like as a star, this has been a real breakout year for her mm. because of the eyeballs that the Caitlins and the Angels bought. But now they're looking like, but that girl right there is really rising the best tide. Thing. Lift all boats. That's right. That's Maybe right. The finals. Well, it's not the final yet. Oh. They're going to the second round, but the Liberty and the Aces are going to be in the second round of the of the, uh, the WNBA finals. But I'm just saying, if the ratings take a little dive, a lot of dive, it's then because, you all know what time it is. That's right. And you can you know take care of your what is it called lead horse. That's right. And um, also too, go listen to Carrie Champions podcast. Naked, she does this thing. She does. She's doing this amazing series called The Rivalry, where she's breaking down how the Caitlin and Angel rivalry started and and how it's benefiting the the sport of women's basketball. Um, I know that there's this, this thing going around now where the WNBA put out a statement, and I, I forgot what the statement said, but basically, like, they're going to be coming down real hard on hecklers and everybody else. You need that, bro. Yo, let the people go crazy. You, you, you need, you need, I know it sounds crazy, but you need to, let me see if I can find the exact statement. You want passionate out. fans. You want pa fans with signs. Like, you want it to go absolutely berserk. Okay, it's the, the WNBA is a competitive league, which this is a WNBA statement. The WNBA is a competitive league with some of the most elite athletes in the world. While we welcome a growing fan base, the WNBA will not tolerate racist, derogatory, or threatening comments made about players, teams, and anyone affiliated with the league. League security is actively monitoring threat-related activity and will work directly with teams in areas and arenas to take appropriate measures that include involving law enforcement as necessary. I agree with that. In this era, you should take all threats serious. But man... When you start having people say they want to kill you as an athlete, oh, you kill it. They're that, invested. Oh, see you later. I know it sounds fucked up, yeah, but yeah, that, they're yeah, invested. Yeah. That's how people talk with the NFL. That's how people talk with the NBA. That's how people talk with Major League Baseball. They're gonna say racist shit to players. They're gonna say sexist shit to players, right? Also, and, 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 sorry, by, go, by the go, way, go. I know sexism is, is women, so it's taken different. We call these guys gay oh. all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Also, also, I, I, this is a very important thing to to note here. The reason the heckling has gone up is because there are people in the stands. So now when you yell something, you can be anonymous. Before, when there's 25 people in the stands, you can have a full-on right. conversation right. with all the players on the court. That's they right. can hear everything you say. And you right. can't say some wild shit. That's right. When there are 18,000 people in an arena, you could scream the nastiest, crazy thing you've ever heard or thought of to another human being with no repercussions. Chris, you're from Philadelphia. The worst. 
the worst. The fucking the worst. worst. You know when you go to Philly, they you're going to experience Santa Claus, racism. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> like, like come on, Santa, racism. Santa. Like, oh my god, how did Santa get heckled, bro? Like, he fucked up. What he do? They were getting blown. It was like an Eagles game. I think uh, they threw batteries at him or something. I mean, crazy. My whole point is, when you get to the point where you have that type of heckling, when yeah. people are that emotionally invested, yeah. it's actually good for the sport. Mm -hmm. There's not one sport that doesn't experience it. I know we're a little bit more sensitive because it's a league full of women, but as the league grows and as more fans start to grow with the league and more casuals start to come, that's going to come with it. Mm. It just is. And it, it, it just is. It just is. Uh, what else we got, Art? What about Diddy, yo? We're not going to talk about Diddy? Tell me what's new with the Diddy updates. I mean, it just seems like a lot more memes have come out. It seems like there's been more information that we haven't addressed the baby oil. We haven't addressed... We didn't talk about the baby oil? I thought we talked no. about the baby oil last week. No, did we? We haven't addressed the dildos. The dildo thing is not real. Okay. Yeah, the baby oil is definitely real. His lawyer said some of the funniest shit. His lawyer was like, <laughs> he buys in bulk. He likes to buy in bulk, which I agree with. <laughs> okay. He clearly likes to buy in bulk. Oh, well, yeah, since we were here last time, did he got denied bond? He's going to be in there until his trial. What does that have to say? Did he does what the white girl? Did he adopts white girl? Whoa. Let's That's click on the thousand bottles art. Right, let me see what this is about. You can never go wrong with the thousand bottles. So spokesperson from Costco denies selling baby oil <laughs> <laughs> following Diddy's attorney's claims about him purchasing items from their stores. Do you have the claims? Click. Okay, let's hear this. Diddy. A thousand bottles of baby oil. I don't know where the number a thousand came. The U.S. attorney said it. I can't imagine it's thousands. I mean, you know, and, and I'm not really sure what the baby oil has to do with anything. Buttholes. Saying it's a lubricant for an orgy. I guess. I, I don't know what you need a thousand on. One bottle of baby oil goes a long way. I don't know what you need, need a thousand for. I mean, he has a big house. He buys in bulk. You know, I think they have Costco's in every place where he has a home. I mean, have you sat in the, in the parking lot of a Costco and see what people walk out of there with? Not a thousand bottles of baby oil. I don't think it was a thousand. I think it was, I think it was, a, let, let's just, just say it's a lot. Okay. I, I think that Diddy's attorney I mean, whenever I hear Diddy's attorney talk, I'm just like, yo, he might as well just walk in the cell with Diddy mm -hmm. and say, Mr. Combs, I'm going to tell you what has been said to buttholes in your house for years. You're fucked. You're fucked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I don't believe this. Every time I hear him talk, I'm like, Diddy, you're paying this guy? Yeah. So what happens? Do you think it's, do you think anyone else goes down? Do you think it's just Diddy? What, what do you think is the... Uh... I mean, other people, have, if other people don't go down, then something's wrong because it's a racketeering charge. Except one person can't do that. Oh, 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 yeah, keep going on that. It's That's a racketeering charge. It's, and, it's, it's and a criminal enterprise. So where's the rest of the enterprise? Racketeering implies that there is a whole group, right? It's a gang. It's mafia. It's whatever. I think what they're doing now, the FBI, I think the FBI has people that they're going to bring in, but I think they're letting everybody... Fuck they self. What, what do you mean? Because Diddy's locked up. Yeah. So just like you see Eric Adams, people tweeting shit and texting shit and all that, they're letting everybody get their shit off. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they're, letting everybody, they're letting everybody get their shit off. And once they do it, then they can incriminate them with can, that. That's right. Now so I got it. That, oh, that's right. God, like, oh, oh Diddy's God. locked up. Everybody's panicking, like, man, you think we on those tapes? This is, hey, 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 you know what I mean? Oh, this that, is interesting. That's what I think the FBI is currently doing right now. This is very interesting. Okay. Yes. Now, so do you think that the case is about more than just Diddy? Are they going to try to get Diddy to flip on someone else? Or do you think Diddy is enough and everybody's happy with that pound of flesh? It would seem like Diddy would be the big fish, right? I, I, like, I don't know where he goes. Like, I don't know who he flips on. Does he flip on some record exec? Does he flip on... And even then, like... How can you prove that that record exec did more nefarious things than Diddy? Yeah. It just I, listen, man. I don't. I re, when I say I truly don't know, I truly do not know. I just know that I thought it was hilarious when Meek Mill just randomly tweeted out, "I got a hundred thousand dollars for anyone." <laughs> Let me see if I can find the tweet, man. Because I was like, I be wanting to just be like Meek. What are you yeah, injecting for, bro? Yeah, yeah. Like Meek. Let me see what Meek. Let me find Meek. I think Meek gets a few tweets and he's like, 
Fuck Stop the world listening is against to me. social media. Yeah. Look at the headline. Meek Mill wants to give detectives 100000 to un uncover why he's connected to Diddy Case. Meek, you're not. No, yeah. You're not connected to Diddy Case. You're not in any of the indictments. This is your. So he said, I want to hire an investigative team, $100,000 cash to find out every specific detail involving Meek Mill name, the Diddy Case. I also want them to look at who is powering the media involving Meek. Anything to do with Buddy. Something not right. Meek. Nobody has you connected to this case. You yeah. listening to these digital dickheads yeah. on social media yeah. making jokes. Yeah. Nobody's talking about you on the news. Yeah. You're not in any of the indictments. Yeah. You're looking at people making jokes on social media, yeah. and you're like, I got a hundred thousand for anybody. And 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 and, for, and and now the feds are like, Meek Mill. Let's look into that. I specific Don't do they work yeah. for him? Yeah. Oh. That's what it feels like. Oh, you're incriminating yourself. He's starting his own Meek Too movement. <laughs> Meek Too. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> For what reason? You know, it's funny. I felt so bad that, like, when I reposted that Diddy joke, I said, by the way, Meek is innocent because he's just in the joke. Jesus Christ. But I was like, yo, he's innocent. Like, obviously, he has no connection just because I felt bad. Because <laughs> I think he really does take the internet very seriously. And I understand if, like... If you're not walking the streets, which a guy like me probably can't just walk the streets, your whole world is the internet. Yeah, yeah, So that's yeah, what you yeah. think the reality is. I get to walk the streets. Like, I get to bump into people and say hello. And, like, that is the world. Yeah. And then the internet is this other thing where, like, trends pop up for a couple of days and then they go the fuck away and yeah. nobody really cares. So it's important to be out there with real people, man. Meek said, the streets know what's up with me. That's not the case. We talking about business side. Somebody powering these bad campaigns with Meek Mill again. Got 100000 for a thorough investigation of who's powering and how exactly my name connect to this. Now, I get what Meek's saying right now. I do here. think there are bots, though. Like, absolutely. There are bots. I've, yeah. I've done that. Me, me and Chris have done that. I've actually done that. I've done... What, what do you call it, Chris? We call it an autopsy. What do you call it? Yeah, yeah autopsy. Yeah, you call it like a digital autopsy. And people and basically hire these accounts that absolutely. send bots, and they all say similar things. They all have this like follower to followed ratio. All that's... mine came from India. Yeah, well, that's where the bot farms are. Oh, okay, so you okay. hire them. They create these accounts that don't look like they're from India. They look like they're from America, America et cetera. That's right. And they all say similar things, but they all have this like follower to follow ratio. It's like ten to one or something. Right. And uh, but the thing is, if you look at someone's comment section. And you see all the comments, you start going, oh my God, this is real. That's right. They're, because most people don't know that you can send bots at people. That's right. And the comments can be very convincing. So it's it's a really interesting strategy because you can really make someone look like they're going through turmoil. But then you walk down the street and it's all love and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Our, this is not reality. Our Meek, you, and Meek, you've done this a million times, Meek. You see them attacking you on social media, but then you have a show. And everybody pops out. Everybody has a great time. It's saying. all love. Who gives yeah. a fuck. Yeah. I was in New Orleans uh, this weekend. I was at Xavier University in the morning. Me and Ricky Smiley, uh, salute to Inspire NOLA. They had a great event they call uh, NOLA Love. 4,500 kids there. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Spoke to the kids. Was out. Then that night I had a book event at Baldwin and Company Books, a bookstore. Yeah. I think it was like 500, 600 people wow. there. Like. It, it, the, the, the real world is the real world. Yeah. But not everybody gets to access that. And I think, you know, especially with a lot of these kids that don't have a front facing version of their business, all they see is online. Yeah, shows last weekend, right? Yeah. It, shows, uh, it was in Ohio, the cats and the dogs. How big is the venue? There were a few thousand, a few thousand each. Yeah. In sold out. Yeah. How many shows you did? We did uh, one show each night. You see yeah. what I'm saying? How many nights? Uh, one show, two nights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it was just... Give the fuck! No, no, social it was, media do what social media does. Yeah, it was Because awesome. yeah. people that support you and rock with you, they actually pay attention to you. But we're lucky. We have that proof. Not a lot of people have that proof. Some, some of these That's people true. only exist online. That's true. So they think that what happens online is the only thing that matters. That's true. They don't have the real life. That's true. And uh, That's true. And, 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 and you can't convince, like to, to, to Meek or anybody else... You can't convince somebody who actually supports you that the things that they're lying about online in regards to you are true. Yeah, because yeah. they have too much. The brilliant idiots. Yeah, we got too much content. You can only convince the casuals. That's and it. There's a lot of times the casuals they might not even want to like you anyway. They're looking for a reason to not like you. That's right. And even those people, 
they might get convinced and then they might watch more of you and be like, man, I was manipulated by that shit. That's like, that wasn't even true. 100%. I've had people DM me that shit. They're like, man, I was an idiot. I believe this other stuff. Then I started to like, look at your content and then, wow, like you got great stuff. So a lot of this shit happens. But if you keep on doing your thing and you're consistent, consistency will uh, prevail, prevail every, every single, single time. time. It never fails. Let's do some asking idiots, man. I want to tell everybody too, um, Salute to all of y'all who have been going out and uh, purchasing a copy of my gra upcoming graphic novel uh, called Illuminati. Um, it is available on Kickstarter right now as I speak. Uh, I want it, it, it's, it's the story of Lily, a young woman with psychic abilities who headed to Los Angeles to investigate the mysterious death of her twin sister. She becomes enmeshed in a dark conspiracy that snakes its way through the pillars of power, fame, and popular culture. And it's, Illuminati is a relentless supernatural thriller that tackles head on the most enduring urban legend of our day, the Black Illuminati. So go to mm. Kickstarter, um, type in my name, Charlemagne, or you can just type in Ill. Lum Illuminati and um it'll come up it'll come up and you can uh purchase a copy of the graphic novel and you can purchase merchandise too I got this hat you see this hat I got on um Illuminati the t-shirts all of that kind of stuff and I'm gonna be at Comic Con we're gonna be at Comic Con on I want to give you the date I want to give you the date we're gonna be at Comic Con on Friday October 18th at 3 45 p.m. in room 1c03 uh, my guy Rob Markman will be moderating. My man Axel Alonzo, who's the editor in chief of AWA, former editor in chief of Marvel, he'll be there. And Dennis Cohen will be there, and we'll be having a conversation about uh, the Illuminati that you can go order on Kickstarter right now. Just type in Illuminati or type in my name Charlemagne, and you can get it. All right? Um, this guy underscore comma says, "Do you think your life would be different if you had sons instead of daughters? If so, how?" Hmm, what you think, Schultz? I mean, it's too early for me to know right now. Like, you know, I'm I'm seven months in. It's like they don't even have a gender yet. Like, I'm sure there are things that I'll Damn, you're really going back liberal, bro. Stop it. This is crazy. She definitely has a gender. <laughs> yeah, no, she just said. definitely has a gender. <laughs> okay. Wow. That was crazy, Schultz. She Yo. don't even have a gender yet? She's seven months worth. <laughs> <laughs> What you been watching, man? I want a little bit. I want MAGA! <laughs> MAGA! <laughs> you answer the question, yo. What would it be like if you had kid uh, dudes? I thought about this yesterday. Okay. And um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love having four daughters. But that's not what he's asking. <laughs> you just invented a brand new Oh, question. do I think my life would be different? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know how. I think I needed daughters. I needed daughters to like... Your parenting would be different. That's what I think about. How would my parenting be different? I'd probably be more paranoid. I'm very paranoid with, 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 with my daughters. I might be more paranoid with my sons. You know why? Because I'd be giving my sons a lot more freedom. Not saying that I don't give my oldest daughter, you know, freedom, mm. but I know that I'm a lot more stricter than I probably would if it was my 16-year-old son. Yeah. But that's only because the way the world is designed and set up, it's not the safest place for women, right? So my mind is always constantly there. I don't think I would be that way if I had um, sons. Yeah, you'd be a little bit. I'd be paranoid. It'd still be the parental paranoia. Yeah. But I know that I would be a lot, maybe looser in parenting. What do you think, Chris? It's hard. I, I give my daughters a ton of freedom, but it's it's difficult. You know, they're, I was talking about this with my father the other day. I mean, there's there's real threats out there. Yeah. But you also can't raise daughters to live in fear. I mean, they got to go out there. Yeah. So it's a very fine balance. And they shouldn't be the ones for to be punished for the fact that men can't control themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And men I mean, also can't control themselves. So, I, you know, it's yeah, like this is the constant. Balance. Yeah. You think about it every single day. But that's the fight, though, right? Because I know my dad raised me out of fear mm -hmm. and not love because he didn't want me to end up in a lot of the same situations that he ended up in. I made a lot of those same mistakes anyway. Right. He just didn't want me to get involved in the discreet life. But I ended up doing that anyway. Hmm. Right. So. It's, I get what Chris, Chris, what, Chris, that's essentially what you're saying, Chris. You don't want to raise your kids out of fear and not love. Yeah. 
But man, bro, it's hard. It's really hard not to yeah. think the worst. Yeah, you know? yeah. I also feel like there's like an added pressure to like you're almost like responsible for your son's masculinity in a way. Whereas like with daughters, I just feel like I need a lover. Like I need her to be confident. I need her to feel secure. But I just need a lover. Like I don't have to be like, yo, toughen up, or man up, or the type of expectations that we put on boys. And we don't put them on boys because we're like, don't be gay. We put on boys because like, yo, the world is tough out there. And if you're soft, someone might take advantage of you. Yeah. So like, but that's true for women. It is true. But I also feel like the mother different type of toughness. It's a different type of toughness. And I feel like the mother is instilling those values. It, there's more of a responsibility on her to instill those. Just like when you have a boy, it's more on the father True. to instill the, the, the toughness, if you will, values but that's, on that's a boy. That's where I think I could have done a better job. You right? made them tougher? At a certain point, I've just kind of like, nah, fuck it. Like if they cry over something, hmm. I'm just like, all right, you got it. You know, where a boy, I'd be oh, like, oh, you, you, yeah, you with a boy, I'm just kinda, I would have been but like, no, fuck it. that. It's like, the way exactly. my dad was me. Exactly. Push you up against the wall, you know. Yeah. Like, life is going to be tough. You're yeah. not going to get shit. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, but life is still going to be tough with them, so why aren't I... You leave that up to your wife, bro. Your wife got to be the tough one. You got to be the example of a guy who is loving, sweet, kind, and supportive so they know that that exists out there in the world when all these dudes are fucking assholes. But you got to push them. Say again? You still got to push them. Yeah, that's what your Asian-ass wife is going to do. You got dragon mom. She's not. <laughs> well, that you got you I got a faulty up. dragon. You yeah, need to get the dragon. Up. Anything with the dragon in the middle sound crazy. Like you can just take two regular words <laughs> As you and put, put ass, ass in the middle. middle. It yeah. sounds crazy. Asian-ass wife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like you, you'd be like, what is this shit? What is this shit called? You'd be like, crystal ass bottle. You know what I'm <laughs> Anything, anytime you put ass does, in something. It does seem severe when you say it like crazy. that. It sounds crazy. I mean, you like dumb podcast. Yeah. Dumb ass dumb podcast. Ass podcast. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, nah, I feel what y'all saying, man. I, 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 it's hard. When you a dad, man, like whenever there's tears in my house, I'm there. Yeah. And I want to be the first person that they run to. Hmm. So there ain't no, like, you don't tell your kid, your daughter, suck it up. What you crying for? You like, yeah. what's, what's wrong, baby? You know what I yeah. mean? You yeah. try to get to the root of it. I don't know. I don't know how my life would be different if I had sons. Maybe polygamy will get legal and we'll find out one day. Hey. Um, broski. If you could only eat one meat, pause, the rest of your life, what would it be? Come on, man. It's a brilliant idiot. You know what it is. Tell us. <laughs> what would it be? What would, you, what would you put those brand new teeth on? <laughs> Yo, you know what I was thinking about in terms of dick sucking? What? And I wish Taylor was here because I had this conversation with yeah, him, yeah. right? I forgot how we even got on. Oh, we were talking about it because Cardi B was saying how, um, and one of those rants Cardi B was on, she was like, you pay these girls $2,000 for pussy, whatever, yeah. whatever. And I was like, well, goddamn, the price of pussy done went up. It was forty dollars a few years ago. Forty? I don't know, but now it's two grand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what I was saying was, one of the reasons I don't have a problem with that, and I told Taylor this, and I told Lauren Larosa this earlier, women need to really think about what it means to have a dick in your mouth. Ooh, talk about this. Just think about it. Yeah. And, and like, if you are a woman. Yeah. You're taking the time to allow this man to put his dick in your mouth. You playing with his balls. You got your pubic hairs in his nose. Yeah, yeah. Then you probably letting him get on top of you. Yeah. Sweat on you. He's getting inside of you. Yeah, it's a lot. You're doing all of this for a man. Yeah. The least he can do is pay a bill. The least he can do is, you know, buy you something. The least he can do is give you a little bread. That's yeah. not prostitution to me. Yeah. Because here's the thing. For whatever reason, we act like the vagina in the woman doesn't have all the value. Yeah. They have all the value. We just talked about it early in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Everything we do, we do for them. Y'all can sit around and act like we simps and all of that stuff like that. No. Y'all motherfuckers just broke. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's, let's just be honest. Because it's not tricking. They say yeah. it's not tricking if you got it. I yeah. say it's not tricking if she's worth it. If you when, if you have it, because I used yeah. to be like that. I used yeah. to be one of those guys that like, I never paid no woman. To do yeah. that. When you get a little bread, it's easier. You're going to do it. Yeah. Because you're doing it for them anyway. Yeah. And women, I don't have a problem with women feeling like they want something from a man because you're putting a whole dick in your mouth. That's a lot. That's a lot. And then, th and then, and then I want you to really think about this, women. You putting dicks in your mouth that you don't have a future with. 
You know what I, you know what I feel like right now? <laughs> you ever see that DJ Khaled interview with, what's the guy's name? Is it Smiley or something like that? Who the fuck is they Smiley? don't believe in us. What's his name? Yes. Speedy, 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 Speedy is they don't believe in us. And the speech is sitting here like, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> no! You. They putting dicks in their mouth. I'm yes! Like, they are. <laughs> so just think about it. You're putting dicks in your mouth and you don't have a future with these guys. Some of you women, if you took the time right now to you write down you, all the dicks you stuck throughout yo, your whole life, you didn't marry none of these guys. You they can't won. get that dick back. You can't unsuck the dick. You can't unsuck a dick. Once you suck a it dick, it sucks. It sucks. <laughs> Now, now let's talk about this because everybody got a podcast you on the YouTube well get channel. Something. Yeah, yeah. Everybody got a podcast on the YouTube That's channel. That's true. So imagine you one of these ladies. Yeah. You done sucked all these dicks. All of them. You got your podcast. Yeah. It's a hit podcast. Yeah. You on there just talking. You just a yapping in the chat. Yeah. Somebody can point to that mouth and say, my dick was in that mouth. Oh my goodness. You got nothing to show for it. Nothing. Get some motherfucking money, man. Interesting. So get some is- money. This That's is the least a guy can do. It's the least. It's yeah, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you're helping someone move. You know, that's that's how you got to think about it. Come on. Like if somebody, if your friend helps you move, you take him to dinner. Something. You do something for you're them. You're not paying him, but you understand that he did a deed. Oh, man. Come on, man. That was helpful to you, and you want him to feel appreciated, so you take him to dinner. It is it is no sweat off your back. And I hate when guys say, "Well, what are you bringing to the table?" She is the fucking table. She's a table. You bro. got dressed to sit at that table. Exactly. You want you want the poom poom. You want to put your <laughs> dick in her mouth. <laughs> and she is doing it. I, I'm telling you right now, somebody out there, yeah. the next time you suck a dick, yeah. I want you to think to yourself, Uncle Charlotte told me, what am I doing this for and not getting nothing out of it? That is crazy. Like there might be girls that have had like a hundred dicks. Just sucking. And they got a roommate still. Whoa. And this man who dick you sucking got a pocket full of money and he telling you, what do you bring to the table? Wow. Poom poom. <laughs> right. <laughs> dick sucks. That's what I bring to the motherfucking table. And you want me to cook and all that shit on top of that? Wow. Get some money, ladies. Get some money. So, broski. The question was, if you could only eat one meat for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> what, what would it be? I <laughs> think... Guys, if you think we're idiots... Oh, hold on. We got to answer this one question. Right, go, 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 Oscar go. B. Savage on him. This is a great question. Oscar okay. B. Savage on him says, what do you guys remember the most of episode one of Brilliant Idiots? Star Shame Enterprise. Star Shame Enterprise. The most memorable thing for me from that wow. episode. Well, number one, it was the first episode of Brilliant Idiots. Yep. 12 years later, we still here. Yep. But Jasmine, Jazz, Fly, Waters. Rest in peace. That was our first guest wow. on that episode. I actually go back and listen to that episode sometimes just because I can't talk to Jazz in the physical anymore. And I also go back and I listen to the other episode that Jazz did with us where I actually really appreciate that episode because she really broke down her life. Mm. And she had never done that. Unbelievable story. She had never broke down her yeah. life. Jazz didn't get a chance to leave us a book or anything like that. So you got to go back and actually listen to that episode to see what mind state was she was in, where she yeah. was going, what was going on in her life. But that first episode, uh, I remember Jasmine Jazz Fly Waters, man. That, that will always be the highlight of episode one of the Brilliant Idiots yeah. for me. Amen to that. Rest in peace to Jazz Rest Fly. in peace. God bless. Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots and don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.